to eliminate words out of the dictionary to change things to more, oh, bad or good versus being, oh, you know, fantastic or horrific. And so, like, as these words change, it's so important with these dictionaries and these etymologies to really look at older copies versus or with the newer ones as well. Right. That's just like the word nice. You know, it's um, the notice meaning is what we have been used to, which, oh, you're so nice. That's, you know, that, that's nice, you know, means what? Synonym. Give me some synonyms. Like, what's actually hurt? Stupid and foolish. Uh oh, wait, but that's, that's it. That's a denotive. But the cognitive, or the connote, uh, uh, the cog, the, uh, the connote, uh, the connotative, uh, I don't care. Connotation. Okay. That means nice as the way that we see it. Right, right. But the denotive meaning means ignorant, someone who is ignorant, someone who is stupid. <laughs> That's what nice means. Same so, with that. So, we're talking about the original meaning means somebody's ignorant or stupid. But that's not the way in which that it is utilized today. You said the same one as what, Brother Reese? Same as, same as bad. Bad means effeminate womanish man or homorphodite. But oh, yeah. Meaning it means to bust right. a window or, you know, hard right. head. Right. Well, so much for bad boy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, right. But, but, but right there, though, bad now means, you know, and even in the 70s, we turned bad, you know, which they told us bad meant something that was horrific, something that was devastating, emotionally, um, a beep, it was up evil. It was, you know, that's bad. Like it was a catastrophe, uh, you know, whatever the case is. These are just synonyms, but bad, you know, now, you know, means good. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've been doing that ever since the 70s. You know what I'm saying? Yo, she's bad, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they've been using bad, you know, to good. Right, right. Bad meaning good. <laughs> right. So, you know, we're looking at that. So there's a lot of words in which that has been... Um, Meanings have been changed purposely. Yeah, like gay. You no, know, gay right. don't mean homosexual. Right. Gay means happy go lucky. You know. Right. 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 So there's a lot of words in which that has been utilized in order to be used, switched up meanings, and then um, forced to make you think that it's just this one way. But. This goes and explain it here. When you see Dr. Carter G. Woodson from his book, The Miseducation of a Negro, he says, when you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. He will find his proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will protest until one is made for his ass. Oh, I'm excuse me. I live in. His education demands it. Wow, that's deep, because that's what we see with the Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they protesting and protesting. What are they protesting for? They're so they protesting for all the shit that's supposed to have happened under the Obama administration. Right. <laughs> that's what I remember. Right. And, and, I mean, for all the killings that occurred in the Obama administration, the police killings, Right. That's what Black Lives Matter was uh, actually originally about. That's what I remember. Maybe I'm wrong. protesting about something they are not. You know? Right. That was, uh, and, and, and that's the issue. <laughs> I was down there protesting because I'm in Cleveland. And so mm -hmm. friends hit me up, you know, excited. excited. Hey, protest, I'm going to stand up for my people. So I'm getting there. But on my way, I kept thinking, like, this, what is this going to do? What is this going to do? We know that protesting ain't necessarily about to change anything for the better so i'm on my way there and as i'm there i'm seeing all the stuff that's going on like they have so many pictures online about the stuff that's going on and one of the majority of things that i saw is like once it got times where people were really destroying stuff majority of them were 
Albion descendants. And so it was like, y'all are out here breaking stuff for our part, but that don't that don't really add up. Somebody really asked you to do that. That's not a part of this. And so at that point, I'm like, okay, well, let's make this as peaceful as we can. Let's spread the love. So I started like a meditation circle out there. But they started throwing the flashbangs, concussions and stuff at us. So it was like, a, okay, scratch this. <laughs> There's a, another way around all of this that will be a lot more beneficial and will cause a lot more difference. Right, exactly. And what we figured out is that to discover the loopholes in this system and utilize them for our benefit, you got to understand that you're dealing with Albions, but they are Masonic Shriners. They are Eastern Stars. They are daughter of Zion. They're daughters of Isis. These people have Masonic ties. So therefore, the Moorish information, they want to keep hidden because guess what? The Moors are the ones in which they initiated them into these particular sciences. So as we awaken back into our Moorish hood, they don't want that. Because <clears throat> that means to turn over the reins. So they will have others believe that Moorish movement, the, the Moors, this. Oh, the Moors sold us into slavery. Well, hold up. You forgot that the first slaves that the Moors had was the Europeans, the Albions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you Albion? Because <laughs> we admit that we did have, you know, some issues with some slavery, but it wasn't necessarily our people. It was the Albions. And this is a known fact. You can look this up in the Barbary Wars, the Barbary um, Treaties. All of this was talking about um, the Albion having ability in order to be their own people outside of us suppressing them, oppressing them. At least this is what is said in history. Which makes me ask, like, okay, so I've heard the theory as far as, you know, the creation of these beings right. in order to mine gold, which makes sense. That follows the story, even as far as, like, how the story of the Anunnaki, where they created the human race. Right. To, the Lulu. You know, and so it's right, like, the Lulu beings. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. in that case, it's like, where... Are there references? The story that about that the story about creating the humans is talking about, or creating mankind is talking about the Albion. Mm -hmm. That's the only ones who was created, right? So Zachariah Sinchin got this thing that was three thousand five hundred, um, or three hundred, or three hundred and fifty thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that long ago. This was just, you know, actually six thousand six hundred to eight thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you. I'll show you that in a second. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get to that in a second. So these two books, well, old school book, classic, is the one to the left, where they never told you a history class. The new school book, which they never told you a history class, um, by, both of them by Hindu Kim and Kush. One was written in the 80s. The other one was written um, in the early 2000s or mid-2000s. Um, I would recommend trying to get the classics. It has more information to me in there. What they never told you in history class. Yeah, it's right at the bottom. Yeah, Indochemic Kush. Indochemic Kush. All right, so this goes back to something in which that Elijah Muhammad said, and this correlates to what we're talking about. Long before there was ever a Caucasian or a white race on the face of the earth, you and I and our fathers were. Now, who our fathers? I'll get to that in a second. Not just thousands of years, not just hundreds of thousands of years, not just millions of years, not just billions of years, but trillions of years. I can't go back that far to trillions of years, but we have been able to go back to billions of years. According to the word of Allah, mighty God, um, to the almighty God, Allah, to me, that we and our fathers were here. We was here. There's no birth record, meaning there is no beginning record of the black people. They have been here forever and forever they have. We don't know nothing about their beginning. There is no prophecy about any ending of them. This is known. The world knows it. The only be like Muhammad, Master Farah Muhammad, not a Sikh peddler. This is MohammedSpeaks.com. That's it, what's your issue? So, 
he's right. Because when I get the book, when the world was black, or better yet, when the world was Kushite or more, the untold history of the world's first civilizations. This is part one, prehistoric culture, supreme understanding. Well, when we get into the word Africa, we understand that the word Africa is actually Kemetic. In other words, Temerian. It's right on the walls. Afura, or Afu, Ra, and Ka. The symbols of Afu, Ra, and Ka is right on the walls of ancient Kemet. When you combine all three, you get the house for the spirit of Ra, or the house of the spiritual son. Now, the house of the spiritual son is talking about your physical body, which correlates to 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? God is Ra. Hell, you say that at the end of your prayers. Amen. I'm in Ra. So, we understand that science. This is really what we're talking about. So, you are African. <laughs> and it's, remember, we had uh, the notice and connotative meaning. And it's denotive meaning, this is what we're talking about, that you are African. You are the house for the spirit of Ra, or the house of the spiritual God, or the house of the spiritual soul. Because that's what Ra is. Ra is solar, soul. All right? But it's... But people are caught up into its what meaning? It's connotative meaning. That's what they're caught up in. Oh, that's Africa. Well, that's 9,000, 3,000, 9,000 miles away. 3,000 on the West Coast, 9,000 if you go to the East Coast of Africa. Now, all of us are Africans. You know, right. And it's, every every one. I, I, right. I don't care if you call yourself white or European. They're Africans too. You know? Right, right. And, and that's what they told us. That's what they told us. Right, right. But they have they have shown themselves to be quite um some quite liars when it comes to historical facts. So we have to always go and break that information down. And one of the good books in which that breaks down is called The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Creedmoor and Richard L. Thompson. So Dr. Leonard Jeffries opened up for me at um, my last lecture that I did up in New York. I brought him on and he opened up um, and we was able to take up a donation for Dr. Leonard Jeffries, which is needed because we got to support our elders. But this is something that he said. He says, whoever controlled the images, control your self-esteem, self-respect, and your self-development. Whoever controls your history, controls your vision. So this is why we're taking our history back into our hands to control our own vision. That's what's, not what's been written for us. Because we know that, as stated earlier, George Orwell has already told us that every image, every book, has been falsified. Remember that quote? <laughs> All right, so this is where we go to the hidden history of the human race. This hasn't been falsified. In fact, it questions that which has been falsified. That's how you know it hasn't been falsified. So humans have been walking the earth for hundreds of millions of years. Elijah Muhammad told us that. But it says here, over the past 200 years, the scientific establishment has selectively ignored, suppressed, and forgotten some remarkable artifacts and bones that contradict the dominant view of human origin and iniquity. Evolutionary prejudices have served as a sort of informational filtering system that has left us with a radically incomplete set of facts for building our ideas about human origins. The human or the hidden history of the human race is a call for the change in today's arbitrarily rigid mindset, deploying an unexpectedly great number of convincing facts, deeply illuminating with critical analysis. 
Readers will find themselves compelled to rethink our understanding of human origin, identity, and destiny. So, this is why we had to go back to the oldest records. So here it says, a groove sphere from the pre-Cambrian South African miners have found hundreds of metallic spheres well underground, maximum is about 200 of them, at least one of which has three parallel grooves running around its equator. According to the scientists, the spheres are found in um, uh, um, pyrophilic rock, which is mined in western Transville, South Africa, which is 2.8 billion years old. 2.8 billion years old. So the hidden history of the human race is a condensed version of this book, which is Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race. And it says that they have found objects 2.8 billion years old. The fears are not natural objects, and their origin is unknown. They obviously was created by intelligent beings. All right? This is when they was telling us that we was extraterrestrial. But it doesn't matter because we're here now. So black people inhabited Russia, Asia, England, Italy, all right, Rome, and America, all right? And of course, we know Africa, so so-called black people inhabited every continent first. Well, this is what is told to us in these books here. But they never told you in history class. It goes through a whole synopsis of us being on every land, everywhere. In Harvard University researcher, Africans are 100% pure human than the rest. I didn't write the article. This is AfricanHistory.com. All right, matter of fact, this is December the 9th. This article came out last week. All right? Or over a week ago. So, African or 100% pure human than the rest. That means the rest is hybrid. The rest is hybrid. The Harvard research has declared that Africans are the only race that has 100% human DNA, while the rest has Neanderthal DNA in them. Well, what is a Neanderthal? I thought Neanderthal was... <laughs> But they always showed us in the uh, uh, Flintstones, you know, somebody hitting it in the head with a club and saying Oonga Boonga. <laughs> so obviously Neanderthals are not humans, right? Matter of fact, Neanderthals are not even Homo erectus. Anthropo uh oh, they anthropoids. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so Neanderthals are anthropoids. In other words, mixed with DNA from ape species, monkey species. While this seems controversially, uh, uh, another separate study concludes with the Harvard study. Concludes with the Harvard study. So in other words, they've been testing this over and over again and they found, oh yeah, man, we hybrids. Well, Elijah Muhammad said that too. Dr. David Emil Reich, a genetic professor at Harvard, and his colleagues analyzed, uh, analyzed excuse me, the genetic variants of 846 non-African people, 175 people who lived in the sub-Sahara region of Africa, and a 50,000-year-old Neanderthal man. They have found out that nine genetic variants found in humans are associated with specific traits that can be found in Neanderthals. The same genetic variants are the same ones responsible for such diseases such as type 2 diabetes, Crohn's disease, lupus, optic disc size, and bilary um, cirrhosis, which is liver issues. The Harvard researchers and his team found out that the Neanderthal DNA affects how keratin uh, filaments develop as opposed to humans. Neanderthals has more keratin filaments than humans, making their skin tougher. This allowed them to survive in harsh, cold climates. All right, that DNA was beneficial to the human survival in such climates. 
Now, what they don't never get into, they always give you the roundabout study, but they don't never tell you what was the problem with them getting this thick ass skin. <laughs> what minerals were you lacking? What vitamins were you lacking? Because you was in a cold, a cold climate as compared to a warm climate, which the Africans were in. Could this have why these occurrences took place? Yes, it did. Number one, vitamin C deficiency. It's called scurvy. Look it up. Vitamin D3 deficiency. Vitamin B12. B6. B complex. This is the reason for type 2 diabetes and Crohn's disease and lupus, cirrhosis of the liver, optic disc size. All of that is based on the fact of a vitamin C deficiency, which we call scurvy, along with a vitamin D3. So these are the vitamins in which that was not being given because there was above the equator in cold climates. They couldn't get vitamin D from good sources, which i.e. the best source is the sun. Or they did not have vitamin D supplements, <laughs> right? And they didn't have vitamin C because vitamin C is in tropical areas in fruit. What fruit grows in the cold climates? Harsh, cold climates in which that they was in. Not very much. Only during the summertime, you might get something. So, this is what caused these problems in the DNA. But guess what? Diabetes also comes from a vanadium and chromium deficiency. So that means that there was not enough foods in which they had vanadium and chromium in it. What exactly did you say? What's the cause of not having the vanadium and chromium? Might you said what? Well, the effect of diabetes? Yeah, it causes okay. diabetes. Right. It helps with the formation of diabetes. Vitamin C, vitamin D3, vanadium and chromium, and B complex are some of the issues for developing problems in the pancreas in type 2 diabetes, Crohn's disease, and lupus. All of these are autoimmune deficiencies. Y'all understand that? That's what that is, autoimmune deficiencies. So uh, this is various forms of AIDS. That's all this shit is. What they call AIDS is not actually AIDS because nobody has ever died of AIDS. AIDS is a complication of damn 22 different diseases that has accumulated on your ass because you do not have the proper nutrients, potassium, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B12 um, specifically, or B complex, vanadium, chromium, zinc, copper, iodine. These are the most um, minerals and vitamins in which that was once plentiful, but has now, because of the erosion of the land, toxins in the waters and the food, pollutants in the sky, has now caused all of these minerals and vitamins to become diminished in the food supply, and plus they tamper with the food, GMO food, which is genetic modified organisms. So we're not getting the proper nutrients. This is why now uh, what was once allegedly part of the Neanderthal gene has now become a regular within the genealogy of the people known as the melanated people here in the United States. Only because of the mineral and, and, and vitamin deficiency. But guess what happens? In three months, if you take all these vitamins and minerals that I just told you about in liquid form, you won't have any diseases. 
<laughs> I have a question, Dr. Aline. Huh? I have a question. Yes. So, um, with the lupus, um, I was diagnosed with that a couple of years ago, and right. my husband changed my diet, and it went in complete remission. I've had children, I've had three children since right. then, since it's been in remission, and I take the vitamins every day. So is that the reason why it's, uh, they cannot find it? Right, exactly. I'm standing. I'm standing, my good sister. Yeah, as long as you stay with your vitamins and your minerals, you stay up on it, you will never have it again. Yeah, I, I'm doing that every day. You take the vitamins, and I double up like you told me to. My right. body feels a lot better. My mind exactly. is superior now. Um, where I will have that sluggish type of thinking because it was only two people in my family was diagnosed with lupus and we were like, where did this come from? Um, and so we never could figure it out. So I appreciate you sharing this vital information to me. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, doctor. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Lane, this is uh, Brother Amir. Yeah, please, uh, Brother Amir. Peace. Plus, one of the biggest things is uh, the parasites in the body. Uh, right, right. Well, we know, what, uh, we know what takes out all the parasites, whether it's in egg form, lava, or whether it's adults. You need, number one, you need black walnut, wormwood, garlic, cloves, and chamom um, chamomile. Those five herbs mixed together will kill every single parasite from the stages of lava, eggs to adult in your body within two weeks. Can you can you repeat that again? Garlic, cloves, black walnut, wormwood, and chamomile. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's one of the biggest things um, um, in the body is the parasites. And right. uh, there's a, even with type 2 uh, diabetes, a parasite that gets into uh, into the right. liver. Right. That causes it's it called fluke not, worm. Uh, yep. Right, the fluke worm. Right. Please, please start off with Ms. Bree. Please. So you remember a few years back, um, talking about how people got diagnosed with lupus because I had lupus too. Um, right. And now they can't find that. Right. They can't find it. You done reverse so, it. That's what I'm talking right. about. You got testimonies, right? So, we, um, I did a survey on Facebook one time and I yeah. that's your survey. Yeah, that's just like I reverse. That's just like I reverse diabetes. You got to reverse that shit. Yep. And I did a, sur a survey of trying to see how many people who got diagnosed with lupus who had pets or dogs in their house. And right. And back to the story of... Um, hey, hey, say what she said. You. you said it went back to what? A Greek mythology story. Yeah, Greek mythology story, right. Lupia, right, which means wolf. Yes, wolf dog. So uh, everybody and, and, here... Um, out of the 30-some people who um, had lupus, 100% of the people had dogs in their house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I know it's parasitic. Right. Dr. Eileen, is the homeopathic good here for the flowers and stuff? Because I do both. The dog comes from the wolf. Lupus is called, it's from Latin, which means um, um, lupia. Which means wolf. I know that. <laughs> See, um, that's like the enlightenment of, you know, Europe. The Moors went there and looked at, no, you know, hey, right. stop sleeping with your farm animals in your house. Right. <laughs> there's, and, there's no point right. and plus, Remus and Remus, they sucked from the titties of the wolf. This is exactly. the statue. What's the name? Remus and Ramus. They sucked from the titties of the wolf. This is what they're showing you. Right, yep. this, this is right, the canine, the Neanderthal, whatever term comes to mind, that's what it was. Um, what we were dealing with. Yeah, this is why the prophet said you're not supposed to have 
dogs in your house. Right. In in Islam, in Islam, uh, there's no way that we will allow the dog to come into the house. Mm-mm. Exactly. And so this is why they be looking at us like we crazy when we got dogs in the cage. We like, uh, look, number one, we don't want them to get killed. But number two, we ain't bring them in the house. <laughs> Is it good to take homeopathics too, Dr. Irene? Huh? I do some homeopathics as well, the human yeah, homeopathics, yes. and mm-hmm. the flowers too. That helps a whole lot. Yes, it does. Yes, homeopathic products definitely helps. No doubt about it. Okay. So right here it says, according to Duo, Neanderthal skin genes are present in Europeans and East Asians, in other words, Orientals. On the other hand, the rest of genes are not compatible with the human genome, and they more probably became extinct. One area in the human genome where the Neanderthal DNA is absent in which affects human language and speech. So basically what they found out is that uh, as they showed us in these caveman movies all the time, they were talking about Oonga Boonga, that must have been real. Because humans have a very high, complex speech and language capability. The Neanderthals did not. So we find that 2 to 10% Europeans and Asians have about that much of Neanderthal genes or DNA inside of them, which makes them hybrids, right? Which makes them hybrids. But as long as we keep mixing back in with each other, guess what happens? Those genes become dormant in which that, this is what he was saying. He says, and they most probably became extinct. All right, so you get, yes. Can I interject real quick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, it's, that, it's a book that they're trying to take off the market, uh, that One Minute mm-hmm. Cure. Right, the One, one Minute, minute Cure. cure. It's, it's all right. Anybody who want it can get it from me. We got it. They can't take it from us because I got that joint. Um, and plus the hydrogen peroxide. What is it? Yeah. yeah. And and I, you take the um, so hydrogen peroxide. Mm-hmm. On this for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got it because it's just a case of me just laying that, having it in my cabinet. Right. I got, I got the book so they don't have everything that they need. But right. I got to get it before they actually take it from uh, off, the, off the market. Mm-hmm. And when you take your hydrogen peroxide, especially 35% food grade, you have to do it on an empty stomach. Yeah. You can't do it after you eat. Otherwise, it would actually cause adverse um, conditions which actually will increase candida in the body. So it has to be on an empty stomach. But this goes into this right here, what we're talking about. White skin developed in Europe only as recently as 8,000 years ago, say anthropologists. And that's albinoism. That's the skin condition that came about just 8,000 years ago, was albinoism. The present form of the Albion just came into existence as Elijah Muhammad said, according to scientists now support Elijah Muhammad's story of creation of Caucasian race around 6,000 years ago, specifically around 6,600 years ago. So they just came into being. Remember, I just showed you um, us making shit 2.8 billion years ago. They just got here 6,600 years ago. So... Mm, a lot of Europeans. Right, modern Europeans, the way that they look now. All right, just 6,600 years ago. Prior to that, you had the Nubians, or Kushites, as we would call them, who um, developed going into these cold climates, albinoism. First, from albinoism, first came what was called, um, they called it leprosy. But really what it was called, because they were losing the melanin in their skin, was called vitiligo, as they call it nowadays. So when a person who has vitiligo completely lose their melanin on the surface, the use of the melanocytes, they become what we term albino. 
And from the word albino comes next the albion. All right. If you listen to the words, phonetically they're the same, except the letters at the end are simply switched around. Exactly. Yep. So, and um, Queen Mother um, posted this yesterday, so I had to get a clip of it <laughs> um, about this white skin developing in Europe only as recently as 8,000 years ago, say anthropologists. So they know that they just got here. All right? And even worse is the fact that they was once trying to hide and make Elijah Muhammad seem as if he was crazy, but now they had to come to say, well, yeah, it was around 6,600 years ago they became into this. <laughs> right. But yet, we got 2.8 billion yo tears, which they call clerk drop. But these are fears in which that dates back to 2.8 billion years ago and they said the only way in which that these could have been made was in zero gravity meaning we did not even make these on planet earth that means we had some type of other technology as you know there's nothing new under the sun and if you think it is then ooh, I got the bridge in Brooklyn to sell you that's crazy because you know everything in Hollywood they put this stuff right in your face once they you know, about it just kind of decoding it. I mean, encoding it. Right. And so there's a show called The 100 on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. And 100, so yeah. the science. You used to watch that for the first three years, but then after, and it's still going on, it's still going on after the last three years yeah. since I watched it, but. I just started getting into it. And so um, it was like one of the only shows I'm willing to watch. And right. So the scientists had to go to space to create the night blood that was making people survive through the radiation poison. Right. But they would—they could only go into space to do it. So that's that's interesting. That's just, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's wild, right? And the crazy part is, is that in the movie Star Wars, this is the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> but a club drop right here looks just like the damn Death Star to the right. So this is what obviously these Europeans been knowing because this information been out. It's been out since the uh, 80s, 70s, beyond. This information already been out. We're just getting it now in order to put our spin on it because we also found two billion year old history in Africa with 16 nuclear reactors found in the 1970s. Wow. 16 nuclear reactors two billion years ago. Still Wreckage is still the ruins of them are still found in Africa this very day. But they come, but they from two billion years ago, and it was found in the 1970s. Mm. See, this this is information that we need to know because we think that we just got here according to them six thousand years ago, which is talking about their creation. Oh, the Bible says that a day unto the Lord is a thousand years, and then God created us in a six-day period. Six days times 1,000 is 6,000 years, God damn it. I'm telling you right now, that's all you've been on the planet Earth. That's it, brother. I'm telling you. I mean, damn, you know, when I hear them say that, it's like me thinking about Hulk. Okay, I'm telling you, brother, right now you need your vitamins and your minerals, brother. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Brother, what you going to do with the 24-inch python get down on you? Yeah. Oh, he put it up two more yeah, inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <But> Twenty inches, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Macho Man. <laughs> that's Macho Man yeah. right in the Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> 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 but right here, yeah. and a hot dog. Right, but right here, scientist. I actually met him. <laughs> I met Macho Man Randy Savage. He, he, he was a good dude. Uh, um, Scientific American Magazine. This is what they found a metallic vase from Precambrian rock. June 5th, 1852 issue of Scientific American Magazine says that contained a report about blasting carried out of Meeting Hill Rock in Dorchester, Massachusetts. And I have a Dorchester, Massachusetts underlined 
because of the fact is that that's here in what we now call and refers to the United States. The blasted scourge, tons of rock described by the United States Geological Survey is put in stone over 600 million years old. So we've been at least in America 600 million years. Oh, I thought you niggas just got here on a boat 400 years ago. <laughs> mm. Now remember, we just proved to you that the Europeans just got here 6,600 years ago his damn self. So that means there was nobody else on planet Earth but us for these billions of years that we've gone back, these hundreds of millions of years that we've gone back. He just got here. So if you was already here 600 million years ago, and then the crazy part is that you were smelting metal. <laughs> yeah. A bell-shaped metallic vessel was blown out the rock, which was about four inches high and was carved and covered with exquisite carving, indicating the presence of artistic metal workers over 600 million years ago. Metallic. Oh, and the vase, as the, as the guy said, Straight Panther just said, he said, it looks like a candle holder. Mm -hmm. So that means somebody was making some wax. <laughs> 600 million years ago. These were sophisticated people. I.e. us, because we're the only people that have been on the planet this long. Elijah Muhammad already told us that we were the original people. The nation of gods and earth, 5% has already told us that we're the original people. The Morse Science Temple of America, the Morse Holy Divine uh, Movement, or the Morse Holy Temple of Science of the World has already told us that it was us. Time never was when man was not. So that's why Elijah Muhammad can say trillions of years. Because in the Holy Cross Circle 7 day, he, was, he read himself as he was a member of the Detroit Temple Number 4, under Lomax Bay, who was the grand governor at the time, supreme grand governor, Elijah Muhammad, read, time never was when man was not. So we see all these strange artifacts reveal history of human origin is wrong. Well, that's why we're doing this class, so we can get it right. This is a half a billion year old hammer embedded in rock that formed 400 million years ago. But guess how old the damn hammer is? The hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. Additionally, so that means shit, that means uh, this 500 million year old hammer was put in rock that was only 400 million years old. A hundred million years later. Somebody threw it down in the dirt. <laughs> That's interesting because I just went camping recently and so with like the little organized firecrackers I was making and I was dancing around the fire and everything and it got lost. And so I'm like, I saw a vision of my, like the future when somebody's going to be digging stuff up and it's like, this is one of the ancient technologies of the bad and da, da, da. And so it's like, that's interesting thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. And then it says, additionally, a section of the wooden handle had begun to morphosize into coal. The hammer's head made of more than 96% iron. That is far more pure than anything nature could have achieved without existence from relatively moderate smelting methods. So when did they have moderate smelting methods 500 million years ago? <laughs> they made that hammer. Right. Hammer! We know they made that hammer. They made that hammer. The hammer is right there. Right? We find an ancient troglobite was stepped on by someone wearing shoes hundreds of millions of years ago. Good God Almighty, here we go again. In the summer of 1968, an amateur fossil collector, William J. Miser, made the discovery of a lifetime 43 miles west of Delta, Utah. All right? Now, troglobites only exist between 260 to 600 million years ago. So it makes it the oldest human fossil footprint ever discovered. Well, this is the only thing in which that the individual who wanted to state that this is B BS. 
this is bullshit, Bill. There's no way that this is possible. <laughs> but in the news conference, the skeptic, the skeptical curator of the Museum of Earth Science at the University of Utah, James Madison, dismissively said, this is what he did, mis- dismissively, there was no men 600 million years ago. Neither were there monkey. So you ain't come from no apes. All bear, all ground sloth to make pseudo-human tracks. What man thing could have possibly been walking on the planet Earth before vertebrates ever evolved? So uh, the gods. But see, that's the cognitive dissonance that we talked about in the beginning. That's why I said that, because I know people will have cognitive dissonance. <laughs> we just destroyed the biblical belief. We just destroyed their uh, Charles Durin belief. <laughs> we just fucked them up all around. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to have a new belief reinstilled. This is the new relief. Um, the new, the newness. So here it is. This is the, actually the footprint. There you go the chocolate bite. This foot was about um a size ten. All right. So it's a human footprint. All right. So all of this is talked about did before. Before the land masses became separated. This is what we call Pangea. 400 million years ago, 600 million years ago, 2.8 billion years ago, Pangea still existed. It wasn't until 200 million years ago that the land masses began to break apart. And according to chapter 47 in the Holy Quran, circle 7, that was caused by earthquakes and other catastrophes. Man, yeah. So here it is. Man-made artifacts found in 300 million year old sandstone. Hmm. Curator Joe Taylor recently molded a series of depressions left by four strange objects that left behind impressions in hard Pennsylvania sandstone. A layer of strata said to be 300 million years old. The sites of discovery is within the tri-state area of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. Its precise location is being kept under wraps until a further investigation has concluded. Well, I already know what they're going to conclude. Oh, Bill, this shit can't be real. No. <laughs> this can't. This shit can't be real, Bill. You come on now. Let's let's be. Come on, look. We're gonna have to take about five zeros off of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we have it. We have a handcrafted bell found in three hundred million year old lump of coal. Good God Almighty. And look at that bell. That that is that is some Shaolin Temple style shit right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's some Shaolin uh, Buddhist slash. Now look, now now you think about the deity that is on top of there. That deity has wings, and the hands is in a prayer position. Yeah. All right. It's called Gun Show. In the hand position. Look at that. We went over um last night um class with the mudras. That was one of the mudras. This disconnects um and unifies um activates the heart as well as also the brain with the left and right hemisphere of the brain. It helps to activate that. So and plus it has wings. So this is a angel of some type. Three hundred million years ago in lump of coal. So wonder why we still get the signs of the angels to this day. Shit, we was already talking about this 300 million years ago. In 1944, a 10-year-old boy, Newton Anderson, dropped a lump of coal in his basement and it broke into half on its, um, hit the floor. When he discovered inside defies explanation beyond current scientific orthodoxy. Inside the coal was a handcrafted brass aloe bell with a iron clapper and sculptured handle. When the analysis was carried out, it was discovered that the bell was made from an unusual mix of metals, different from any known moderate alloy production. That's how they know that this ship was real, including copper, zinc, tin, arsenic, arsenic, 
iodine and selenium? Shit, we didn't even know arsenic and iodine and selenium could even be made into a damn <laughs> metal. But it is an element. <laughs> The scene from which this lump of coal was mined is estimated to be 300 million years old. This is a 290 million year old human footprint that experts baffled. The rock which belonged to this premium period 299 to 251 million years ago was discovered in New Mexico. So if you notice, if Pangea was together, we was walking, obviously, nomadically, into these different regions and areas in which that we now call the seven continents. But we was already there. Showing what I put up there earlier about us being in all these continents prior to the existence of anyone else on planet Earth. That's Oriental and European. So it says we discovered in New Mexico and features a human footprint left behind apparently nearly 299 million years ago. But there weren't any humans on Earth at that time. Were there? Hey, <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that, that, that meal, that, it, the, the white, the European said that, is this a true story or not? They said it was building a pyramid. Is that true? Make it like um, connections to it. Because they're trying to say that's how you get the different types of people in different countries. They right. fail in different, different languages. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's what they said. Mm -hmm. yeah. It has some, some, some bearing. But here it is 225 million years ago. This is a commonly held concept of Pangea. Pangea was still going on, and people still walking back and forth. But here it is another human. Um, shoe print was discovered in 1927, preserved in Triassic limestone dated 225 million years ago. So here it is, the same time in which that Pangea is beginning to start breaking apart 225 to 200 million years ago, we have shoe prints. All right, and where did this happen at? It happened, it says January the 25th, 1927, amateur um, geologist um, Albert E. Cap Knapp um, discovered a remarkable preserved hill mark made in Triassic limestone dated 225 million years ago. Knapp spotted the fossil among some loose rocks where he were descending a small hill in the Fisher Canyon, Persian County, Nevada. So now we get to the continental drift. So everything that we just talked about was before the continental drift. So think about all that history that we just went over the last 40 minutes and all that happened before we even got to the damn continental drift. <laughs> all right. So, well, in the 1920s uh, century, or 20th century, a German scientist, Alfred uh, Wengener, um, published a book explaining his, his, his theory that the continental land masses, far from being immovable, were drifting across the earth. He called this movement or continental drift. All right? So, we know... All right, so, during the same time that the continental drift was occurring, we still had people walking with shoes on all over the damn planet. Now, isn't that something? In 1997, there was a case of a 200 million year old shoe print discovered on Red Mountain in China. So see, this is still all before the Europeans came on planet Earth and the Asians. So this means that we was already in these areas. One particular fossil dated 200 million years ago had a shoe print on it. The school teacher discovered the fossil on Red Mountain in Urum, Urumqi. Um, city in 1997. The shoe print is in a slate rock and measured approximately 10 inches. It is clearly a shoe print. On the hill portion, portion of the shoe print, there is a precious short codfish fossil about five inches long. Right? So, St. Louis, Missouri, footprints in premium rock 200 million years old. 
and bury Kentucky footprints and Pennsylvania rock, 200 million years old. We can keep going. Now, when Elijah Muhammad said that um, we was on planet Earth, we was here, and our fathers, our fathers are talking about the giants. That's who that was. When Elijah Muhammad said that we and um, us and our fathers, we were here. Us is talking about humans who's about six, seven, maybe eight, nine feet tall. But our fathers, good God Almighty, our fathers, God damn it, these jokers grew 100 feet tall, down to 50 feet tall, to 36 feet tall, down to 12 feet tall. And so this is proof of them existing. They left their big ass footprints in stone. And it's all over the world. Giant human footprint discovered in China. All right? In Spain, Sri Lanka, Paraguay, Bangalore, Botswana, Texas, Australia, Thailand, Canada, New Mexico, Russia, Alaska, Syria, Belize, Cleveland. Uh oh, Cleveland, oh, Cleveland up in the building. There was giants in the earth in those days, and this is biblical. And after all that, the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became the heroes and the famous warriors of ancient times. Genesis 6 4. So these are the skeleton figures representing just a few giant human remains unearthed and documented in the historical record, along with the historical account of Goliath, who had three brothers as big as he. Og, king of Bashan, whose bed was 13.5 feet long, and Maximus Thrax, a Caesar of Rome. So here it is. There's giants in the days after Noah, where anyone between 16 to 35 feet tall, and the giants before the flood was anywhere between 50 to 100 feet tall. All right? Now look at this. 36 feet tall. This is dating back to 650 BC to 640 AD. Carthaginian uncovered two this size. An earthquake in Timorian uh, Bosphosis uncovered one more. 36 feet tall, two of them. All the way down to the present day man, six feet. So, we know that they existed. On the walls of ancient Egypt, you see the giants carrying a stone. They want to know how this shit got built? I just told you. Builders of pyramids are giant people by size of five to six meters tall. Six meter tall giant um, uh, guy was able to lift four to five tons of blocks. These blocks, they, they all lifting the blocks is right there in your face. Look at the giant compared to the average height of the man. This is showing you. Exactly. So they were some tall jewels. Exactly. These are, these are our fathers. This is what Elijah Muhammad meant. Let's go back for you. We can see that joint one more time. You know, we're going to have to see that right there. We're going to have to see that right there. Right there, right there. Right there. Long before there was a Caucasian or white race on the face of the earth, you and I and our fathers were. All right. You and I and our fathers were. These were our fathers. I got to make that clear. That way everybody is caught up. The ancestors pulling the stones, not aliens. So we all help to build these temples. I got a question, Dr. Lee. Yes. These tall giants are what those so called called the Anunnaki? The Anunnakians? Yes. The Anunnakians, yes. Okay. So Hebrews making much of the temple of the Visor and Thebes, Luxor Temple. Dated to Thutmosis the third. Right, Thutmosis the third is Moses in your Bible. 
Here you are, once again, our fathers. Look at them at the height of the giraffe. The giraffe is their pet. Look at him. Now look at you compared to the giraffe. You see this? This is right on the walls of ancient Egypt. Why would they make the person almost tall as the giraffe? Exactly. Here it is again. Giants. Oh, there we are. Humans. <laughs> Our fathers. What happened to them? Killed them off. And so that's where the story comes in with David and Goliath. Right. Gotcha. This is even Native American right here. Right. To the left here. When they came, we were the descendants of the Olmecs, and we was taller than they were, as you see here. You don't believe it? Get the book, The Black Celts, or Moors in Ancient Britain. The Grimaldi, African man is known to have occupied Europe in ancient times. Moors have been living in Britain from, his, from prehistoric times to the present era. Irish tradition tells of a giant-like race of Africans. A giant-like race of Africans. A giant. Now, this goes back to the question that you just asked me. Here it is. The construction of Stonehenge has been attributed to giants who sail from Africa, bringing their skills with them. The presence of giants may not necessarily be a fragment of the imagination. Giants have been mentioned in the Bible. There was a black Canaanite race called Anakim. Anakim, as in as in what you just finished asking me, Goddess? The Anunnaki. The Anunnaki. right. The Anakims are the Anunnaki's. And they was what? A black Canaanite race. Wow. When the black Hebrews first saw that, they realized how small they were themselves. And there was, um, where they saw the giants, the sons of Anak, who came, who come of the giants and were in their own sight, as grasshoppers, right? In their own state, they were small as grasshoppers next to these giants. This is what they say. This is, this is Numbers, the 13th um, chapter, the 23rd um, verse. Is this where the technology comes in yeah. as well because of the Adonaki people? Huh? Is that where the technology surfaced from the Adonaki people? Right. Okay. Over the last over the last four hundred thousand years, yes. Okay. But there, was, but there was beings, as we showed you, that was already on planet Earth two point eight billion years ago. Those were the Syrians. The Anunnakians are even a hybrid of the Syrian beings. Oh, okay. All right. So this is what happened one hundred fifty million years ago. This is how the landmass looked, and as you see, North America and Asia were still joined, called Lower Asia. And South America and Africa were still joined, called Gondwana. All right? All right? So, all right, I'm going to continue on here because there's some things. So the indigenous Americans, who we already proven was already here 600 million years ago, we was told that we were wiped out and replaced by mongoloids, and that they was really blacks from recent Africa, brought here, all brought here to the New World by Europeans on slave ships. We are the first people on all continents, as we already proven. All right? The oldest people on face of the earth get the book Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West. W. Raymond Drake, he states that the, the pygmies inhabited earth for 30 million years. When you read the stories in the Sumerian text about Anu to get the Anunnakians, Anu was actually 
the race of people known as the Twa people. They was known as the Anu people. All right? And so the pygmies were termed used by various ethnic groups worldwide with the average height usually low. Anthropologists defines pygmies as any group of adult men who grow less than 150 centimeters or 4 and 11 inches in height, average height. All right, so the best pygmies are the Aka, the Ifa, the Mbuti um, of Central Africa. There are also pygmies in Australia, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, um, and Brazil. Um, if you haven't noticed, this is all around the world, I, 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 I. All right, the term also includes the, the Negritos of Southeast Asia. The remains of at least 25 miniature humans who lived between 1,000 and 3,000 years ago was found on the islands of Palu in Micronesia. So, Albert Church wrote in his book, Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man, states that the pygmies, who are the Twa or the Ta, or Tahites, known as Anu people, are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. So when he said 30 million years, Remy Drake said 30 million years, that is being very conservative based on what we found 600 million years in the, in the North America and 2.8 billion years in Africa. That was being very um, conservative, all right? But he went much further back than anyone else in anthropology and archaeology and paleontology would want to go because academia holds them back from doing so. If they say anything of this nature that we're teaching today, they will not have their job tomorrow. All right? This is why you see a lot of those who are in the academic field who are professors, they teach this Charles Durham bullshit. And even if they are members of the Nation of Islam, and it, they are professors. They still have to teach the bullshit. So here it is. Pygmies are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. The Nile Negroes were probably one of the first of the ant root race, the race that was the first and the oldest race of men after the pygmies. This is 1903, page 163. All right. So... Um, we get right here. I'm not gonna read all it is. From Arabic, the native accounts we learned after the 11th century, the Sudan states the number. Nah, 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 nah. we'll keep it moving. All right. So here we find um, that the word of Bantu, the word of Bantu, or Bantu people simply means the children of Antu. Antu. In the event, Africans came to be known as Bantu, meaning Antu's people. Cultural historians actually attest to the fact that ancient Africans revered a goddess more than they did a god. Right? Now check this out. This is what Kriya says. The link to the Sumerian civilization in southern Africa simply cannot be ignored or erased. They can even be traced with etymology in the names and origin of indigenous people. The most obvious evidence of the mysterious origin of the word Abantu. The name commonly used to describe South, black South African. According to Creed Matois, the name is derived from the Sumerian god Antu. Abantu simply means the children of the people or people of Antu. Now, Antu was the wife of Anu. <laughs> we, just, we just told you, showed you, and, and, and Anu was Anu were the Twa people. The now Negroes were the Antu or the Bantu people. So these are talking about tribes. We thinking that they're talking about just one person. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brother L. Yes. Um, at one time, the Twa people, they were giants. Right. Uh, exactly. uh, yes. But um, lots of times they don't talk about 
uh, what really happened on this planet. Uh, even like Revelation, it talks about the fire that there was a nuclear war on this planet. Right. And this is what caused them to shrink. Because when there's less oxygen oxygen on the planet, yep. um, it causes you to shrink, plus it causes you to use less of your brain. Right. So when you look at uh, Arizona, you look at the, all of the sands, and you look at uh, in Africa where there's desert and all of these things, these are evidence of the melanin being uh, removed from the soil. Right. And it's radiation. This is why right now in Africa they have the hard time of growing crops. Right. Because the radiation poison hasn't completely left, but there's new technology now that can convert those things back to um, um, bring grain and rich, which will increase have us to increase our height and everything because this is a uh, galactic month of transformation right so um so yeah just one thing you know but um but yeah so this is um you know this is what's really has happened on this planet and uh and pangea all the land still is attached so that's why uh during that reconstruction period the europeans the caucasians i should say because we're the europeans uh, the Caucasians um, call themselves taking countries from here and put them over there, over what they call it, the Middle East and these other places. So when the prophet filed uh, for the trust, that caused the whole world to be entrusted under his trust. Right. See? Yes. So, <laughs> um, so that's why, because um, he put in a 706 generational skipping trust so but that's all bro uh, brother uh, dr Ling. i'm gonna mute out which would be called an express trust um and to verify what brother amir is saying here it is the hidden life in freemasonry by cw ledbetter 33 degrees he says this that pigment race is a relic of the old lemurians and represent them more purely than any other people. The Lemurians at one time was a gigantic people, but in the process of dying out, oh, see, so he doesn't mention the radiation and the wars of nuclear technology. This is why I showed you that we had 16 nuclear reactors in South Africa or in Africa alone two billion years ago. Yeah. So this is not something new. We've been fucking ourselves up a long time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Back to the reference of the hundred. Um, what happened was the scientists that, was, uh, that went to space to create the night blood or the exact mm -hmm. spheres. Um, basically, she knew created the AI that realized in order to heal and save humanity, I'm gonna have to kill everybody basically with these nuclear uh, reactions. And so that's why she went to space as everything was taking place to create that clerk right. store. Right. And, and then started dropping them down in order to see yeah. if the radiation was still there. And yep. find out that there was already people there. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. so right here it says the Lemurians were at one time a gigantic people. So the Twa people was a gigantic people at one time. But in the process of dying out, they diminished the size. The African Bushmen are also remnants of the same race, but they were very mixed blood. And the same thing is true of those who are usually called the Australian Aboriginals. Except that in their case, this is a very ad light admixture of Aryan blood. At one time, the pygmies were spread in more of Africa than at present. Some of them were the first people to enter Egypt. All right? So, right here, in the book by Dr. Clyde Winters, it's called the Ma Confederation. It was the original homeland of the Egyptians. The Mandi, the Sumerians, the Elamites, and the Dravidian speaking people. I call these people the Proto Sumerians or Sahar excuse me, Saharians or Mayatians. They worship Seth and Amun, which is Amma. 
All right? This is what Dr. Cl um, Dr. Um, Clyde Winters talked about. So, we get the book, The Origin and Evolution of Primitive Man. Right here, he says, from these little men spread it all over the world. That's what I always say. We was all over the world! North, east, south, and west. Until not only Africa, but Europe, Asia, North and South America and Oceania was populated by them. They were the first, the little red men of the earth. From the pygmies evolved, continued, evolution continued progressively into the following order. To the Bushmen, the Masaba Negroes, the Nalitic Negro, the Maasai, and the Mongolia, um, Mongoloids, and then the so-called Aryans or Europeans, or as we would call them, the Albion. It was the last, as you see here. He went through the list. Who was the first and who's the last? But remember, the Bible says that the last shall be first and first be. No, no, not in this case. <laughs> What's his name? Albert what? His name is um, Albert Church Ward. Albert Church Ward. All right, so. So right, discover first, moderate Britain had dark skin is a reminder. We all from Africa, experts say. <laughs> so this is how we can explain this shit in Uruguay, Thailand, India, Malaysia, America, Suriname, Bali, Australia, and Colombia. As the original Asians, the original Australians, the original Latin people of Latin descent. Original Filipinos, the original Indians, the original people of India. This is how we can explain it because as we just finished seeing the twelve people from here, these little men spread it all over the world. North, east, south, and west. Not only Africa, but Europe, Asia, North and South America and Oceania was populated by them. This is the this is the proof. A I say watch this this is the proof right here. This is the proof. 100 amazing facts about the Negro was complete proof by Jay Rogers. He says the people of Negro descent living in Asia and Oceania probably exceed the numbers of present Negro population of Africa. The purest Negro types are in Southern Asia. Who did they come from? They came from the 12 people who've been on the planet for over 30 million years. Right here we have a 28 million year old human skeleton in the British Museum in the basement from the Caribbean islands of Guadalupe, which was once put on. Now this is this is not overstand. This is y'all. This is 26 million years older than Dagnesh. Dagnesh is the is um Lucy. Right, right. This is now. This is 28 million years. Lucy is allegedly only two million years old and is an ape species. But this is a human skeleton that they found back 28 million years ago. So this is 26 million years older than Lucy, than Dagnesh. Right. All right. So even older than Lucy, they still found, check this out, 1887, um, on Florentino, Amicino, discovered apparently man-made heaths. So man-made heaths, so remember, we're talking about smelting metal, man-made heaths, primitive flint tools, carved bones, and a moderate-looking human spinal bone in placeo strata dating back to three to five million years old. At Monte Hermosa, Argentina. He also made similar finds in Mycocene strata in Argentina, 5 to 25 million years old. Wow. Once again, millions of years older. This 1.8 million year old skeleton indicates that it may have been just one human species on Earth 2 million years ago. We shoot longer than that.
I get this book, Sex and Race by, by Jay Rogers, Volume 1, specifically. Sex and Race by Jay Rogers, Volume 1. J.A. Rogers? J.A. Rogers, yes. So now you have Negroes over here who want to be black Indians and this their African roots, but this is all going to plan by Rabinsky, uh, 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 who was the United, former United States National Security Council member. He said, we must keep African Americans from connecting with continental Africans. That's the plan. So they don't know that they fall into the plan. Africans can't stand you because you don't know your damn self. That's why Africans can't stand you. You don't know who you are, but as soon as you reveal that you know these sciences, they're like, oh, shit, for real? <laughs> and so this is why we had to show people, because... These black Indians are trying to use the empress and say, well, empress ain't never teach about no, uh, no, us, uh, uh, us coming from no Africa. Well, actually she did. We turn up the ancient ones in her book. You can go and read it. She says right here, the world was Africa before it broke up and fled away. Confirmed Genesis 10, 25. The races and traces of his whereabouts is not easy, yet a colored chart of man can be fixed easily. Man's origin is in Africa. That is when Africa was the whole earth, one landmass, which we call Pangea now, but it was Africa. The Washita are the original ancient race of or nations of people. They are from Africa to the land of Nye. All right, sleep. We are the sleeping giants that must be awakened. We are separate from what we know as Africa. All right, so when we get into the Empress, we got to get into deeper meanings too. Because right here we find that the Empress um, was um, of the Washington Didac de Manu Moors, also called the Choctaw, a Septo, um, and Shepto uh, is Choctaw, which is the tribe of Shabazz, the tribe of Hebrews or Israelites, as we know, so Moors are Hebrews or Israelites. We as Washita are also Hebrews or Israelites. Lay claim to the following land by through bloodline. Her Majesty, Her Highness, the late Dr. Empress Verdiasi Tierra Washita Turnica Gaston El Bay is the great great granddaughter of Marie Antoinette, six times removed, and the rightful heir to the throne of France, uh oh, Spain, and England by the royal blood. Marie Antoinette. She laid claims to the following land by and through bloodline. The Bourbon Estate, also known as the Imperial International Estate of the um, Bourbon Hasburg Empire, which included Western Europe. What is that? It includes the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, Sicily, Nepal, Sardinia, Spain, and Portugal, as well as most of North America and Caribbeans in addition to Central and South America. All of North America west of the Imperial Demarcation Line 1713 or British Royal Proclamation Line 1763. This is the broken down of the royal imperial bloodline for the Washington Eternal Moors, the young heirs to the French throne. Um, King Louis the Seventeenth married the young heiress of the Washington Eternal throne, Anna Maria. Their um, imperial marriage will become official in 1795, persuading to the conveyance of the Spanish land grants, which we showed y'all last week, um, that it was mentioned in the Celestine prophecies. Only 20 minutes into the movie. He said, oh, the Moors gave it to us through a land grant. And it was here in South America. All right? 
Yes, it was Shoish. So, so all those empires that we talked about was under us. So therefore, when you read in history, the Almohadid, um, the Almohads, Ahedes, Almohades, Almohadids, the Atlanteans, Aztecs, Carthaginians, Etruscans, um, shoot, the Minoans, um, the Hassians, Inca. Um, Iroquois, the Morians, as we already showed you, the Morians were the squad people that's already been proven by their 33rd degree CW lab better of the Theosophical Society. Moabites, Olmecs, um, Ottomans, Phoenicians, Powhatan, um, um, Prussians, Saracens, Sumerians, Turks. British Empire, Moorish Empire, Spanish Empire, French Empire, Holy Roman Empire, Habsburg Empire, as well as also the Tartarian Empire. It was all us. All yes. us. All right. Yes. Yeah, all of those titles, all those European titles, they all belong to us. Right. Because those Europeans that they went on a mission. Those were missionaries and they set up those empires in the American, those are actually, Europe is actually the American colonies. Because when the Europe, when the experiment went wrong and they were, people were isolated from what they call leprosy, we sent missionaries out and, the, you know, missionaries always go to heal the poor or this and that. So right. those missionaries that went from here, they set up those American colonies. So yeah, all of those European titles, they all belong to us. Yep. So the thing is, it's a matter of stating a claim so the so relief can be granted. Right. Yeah. So that's that's why uh, as a more we should actually be using Atmoti law because that is the law of the sea. And as a moor, you're supposed to be able to navigate the waterways. Right. The human body is 80% water. Right. So Indeed. we use all law uh, as more. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, um, all of those things now, uh, they have to be reclaimed and everything. So, um, I'm going to talk to you sometime, hopefully maybe tomorrow, sometime this week, Dr. Ling. Okay. Uh, Brother Fahim. So, um, so I don't, so, um, cause I don't know if it's going to, um, you know, may not have the time to wait until March, but. Right. You know. Yeah. So uh, that uh, we'll try and get there in person. Okay. But uh, we will. I will give you a call. We will talk to you this week uh, and everything. So I'm muting back out. <laughs> All right. Indeed, brother Amir. I appreciate that. All right. So documents in Cairo, Egypt, as well as Mangenko oral tradition, reflects the sea voyage of the great Malian Empire from later period, a year after sending an expeditionary fleet across the Atlantic in 1311, King Abu Bakari II sailed west with a huge flotilla. How huge? Go get to how huge this was in a second. They said, but this was almost 200 years before Columbus. It says, neither of the two Mandinko fleets came back to Mali to tell their story. Explain. Um, Dr. Um, Ivan von Sodoma. But around the same time, evidence of connection between West Africans and Mexicans appeared in Strata in America in the overwhelming combination of artifacts and cultural parallels. They suggest that the Aztecs may have witnessed Abu Bakari landing and took him to be the reincarnation of one of their gods, a black haired, black bearded figure in white robes, noted um, Ivan von Sodoma. One of the representations of Quasicoto, modeled on a dark skinned outsider appearing in paintings in the Valley of Mexico, 
while the Aztecs began to worship a Negroid figure mistakenly for their god, um, basically, Tezcatlipoca. All right? So, let's look at Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl was recognized as the Messiah by seers and astrologers. All right? His hair was red. His complexion was black. His hair was woolly. All right? He performed numerous miracles. He fasted 40 days. He was tempted by the evil one. He resisted and was prosecuted and eventually crucified on the Virgo Equinox. Now, this is the same as Jesus, and this is coming from the Cambridge Encyclopedia, New World. Here it is, another sign of Quetzalcoatl, and as you see, he's on the cross. On the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away rolled away all right now you know that song all right so here it is <laughs> who was quietly though they tell you right here all right horace <laughs> who was quietly quote horace <laughs> who was quietly quote horace he was Heru, where you get the Jesus story from. There it is. I've seen some sources that mentioned that Quasicoto was a, a hermaphrodite of the man. Oh, uh, hermaphrodite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, it, it was, it's all symbolic. It wasn't just a man, right? you know what I'm saying? But... The symbology of the unification of masculine and feminine energy is the sign um, in which that we were seeing yesterday. Actually, when I was talking about um, Issa, Peru, then his mother was also Issa Aset. His father was also Issa Atum. All right, so this is all this Issa. That is a feminine, that's feminine energy. All right. Um, the signs and symbols herein portrayed read that he is the great Lord and God of heaven, situated at the North Pole. He is the God of the pole stars and the God of the North and South and the heavens and paradise. His age was given at 33 in the Mexican Cordaxes. And it was written in the hologlyphics of Egypt at 33 years. Well, hold up. Jesus allegedly died at the age of 33. Hmm. Quasicoto is represented in the paintings of the Cordex, um, Borgeridis, um, Boranius, nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross, y'all. Sometimes even th between the two thieves, he was crucified with them. Hmm. That's the same exact story. The imagine conception is described. This is also described that, you know, that Quasicoto Oh, came through immaculate conception. Same story. Oh, there it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. There go the black figure, quite the and the uh, white Jesus. Oh my white Lord. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what happened here. The Mayans created their calendar six years before the birth of Christ, a calendar that makes the end of the world prediction. If you ever watch the History Channel, you may be familiar with the Mayan prophecy. This program shows the ancient people decoded the past. The later day, um, day Saints movement believed that Quetzalcoatl was historically Jesus Christ, but believed his name and the details of events was gradually left over time. Quasicoto is not a religious symbol in the latter day saint faith and is not taught as such, nor is it in the doctrine that Quasicoto is Jesus. However, one president of the Church of Jesus um, Christ of Latter day Saints, John Taylor, wrote the story of the life of the Mexican deity or de um, divinity. Quasicoto resembles, closely resembles that of the Savior. So closely, indeed, that we can come to no other conclusion that Quasicoto and Christ are the same being. Oh, Quasicoto and Christ are the same being. Mm, 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 mm. 
Now, like plagiarism to me. Oh, we're going to get to it in a second. So the sign of the cross was placed on the tomb, which is the America, Peruvian sign for the word Amaru. And the addition to the word Ka, or land, represents the sacred national name America. So this is to your right, you see the word Amaru. All right? As you see, is a cross, the snake and the pole. This is a Maruka, or Maru, the land of the plume serpent. It says that Amaru is who? He is Heru, he is Quasicoto, as a god of the air. He is connected, some say, with the cardinal points and the wearing the insignia of the cross, which symbolizes them. But Celis, um say of him, he had a protruding trumpet like mouth, like the wind god blows. His Figures suggest worlds and circles. All right. Hence, his temples was built in circular form. The head of the wind god stands for the second of the 20 day sign. All right. So, when we get to it, we find that it symbolizes the primordial or the primal serpent. This is us on the pottery. Now, if these Individuals look like the today Mexicans that you see. There's something wrong with your eyesight. Most definitely. So here, um, written under the pseudonym Arides James Price, issue four of the Purple Bowl in learning contemporary uh, commentaries under the title The Book of the Asuri Veil. This ran in Lucifer, a philosophical magazine between September 1894 to February 1895. Price suggested that the name Quasicoto is known in Peru under the name of Amaru, as in Amaruca. He's going to get to that. From the latter name came our word America. Amaruca is literally translated land of the plume serpent. So you are in the land of the plume serpent, as you are the plume serpent. All right? Exactly. The is right in Ohio, in Adams County. Exactly. The priest of this God of Peace, from their chief center in the Cordillera, once ruled both Americas. Now this Manly P. Hall's book, America's Assignment with Destiny, page twenty-two. Okay, yeah, because it just get cut off. Okay, good. Because me and Mira had both asked you to mute your phone because of a little bit of feedback coming from it. I don't know. My phone. I, I, I'm not on my phone. I'm on my laptop. Okay, it's muted now. Okay. All right. All right. So we found Wednesday is the day of Mercury, Hermes, which is Quasicoto, which is Heru, which is Omaruka. <laughs> Different names for the same God. They all symbolic to the serpent of wisdom, or we call it right here. The meaning of the name is sacred serpent. Sacred serpent. That is also the Naga, the Cobra. It's a symbol of the Kundalini power. Cosmic energy coil and slumbering, slumbering in, within man. It inspires seekers to overcome misdeeds and suffering by lifting the serpent power up the spine, which is the, the spine symbolizes that cross. There it is. That's that's the cross right there. That's the spine. And you got to raise that serpent with that cross up across it. Say it again, God. Um, there's talk of the, <clears throat> the Nagas people in the uh, Buddhist text. Yes. Yeah. Sanskrit. Yeah. Or uh, like mm-hmm. basically the Garden of Media, which is um, called Agartha. Right. I'm telling him. We are. Yep, so. You still don't get it? Here it is. This is the secret teaching of all ages, Manly P. Hall. These children of the sun adore the plume serpent, who is the messenger of God, or messenger of the sun. He was the god of Quetzalcoatl in Mexico, Cucumas in Quiche, and in Peru, he was known as Amaru. From the latter name came our word America. America is literally translated land of the plume serpent, the priest of the god of peace. From this Chief Center, all right, so right there is telling you the same thing, right? So here, 
All right, this is another guy. This is the God of the North, as in North of Mexico. All right, who name is Shiamin, which is Shiamin, or which is another name for Ameruka, or Amin Raka. All right, which is associated with abundance and success and riches. All right, this is another guy, Shichel. Right, this is the god of fertility. Right, of the jaguar goddess of midwifery and medicine. Yeah, what? Yeah, say what's to eat. So, this is what we are finding out that all it is is talking about you. Even when you get to the name America. You see the name America, it says America. Now remember, we just finished going through how Quasicoto, who is a model, where we get the name of Maruka from, is melanated. We've seen the pictures of him. Now look at the name America. He says a native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored, copper colored races found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. 1828. What's the dictionary? This is where they started trying to change that. Original, as you see here, who is copper colored and mixed, which is not copper colored. Brown, red, brown to red. There it is. Beauty comes in many colors. Uh, Brother Dr. Lane. Yes. The thing is, if you le if you call them an American. Like Donald Trump told them, just because they were born here doesn't make them a citizen. Right. Birthright. So you have to keep the find the boundary. If you're an American, or American, so call yourself American. They're you're they're Caucasian. They're not Americans. They're right. pilgrims. They're not Americans. Don't hey, don't fall for the okie doke. Right. So. We have to make sure we have the uh, the uh, Mason Dixon line that separate uh, those uh, entities from the north and the south. Don't let nobody steal your birthright. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And here it is. So, Western. Oh, go ahead, God. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying. So, uh, don't call them Americans. You don't right. call judges. They're administrative, uh, so learn the law, uphold the law. That's what Yashura said. He came here to uphold the law, enforce the law, and like like the prophet said, we're part and parcel of the government. Right. So that means certain positions in the government are strictly for us, and you as a national. Uh, you rule over a federal government, and those people are, are the appendix of the Moorish Empire. Right. So let's keep things clearly and and have 2020 vision, because everything is definitely super serious now. Of who are you? you know, see, indeed. who are you? True, indeed. So right here in Western's new universal unabridged dictionary, it gets into even the following is the original application of the name Maru. So right here, what is that telling you? If the word Amaru Ka, uh, Maru is where we get the name America from, and then it tells you that the word Meru, which is short for Ameru, is where the name comes from, the original application of the name. Then when we go to ancient Egypt, why is that name found in ancient Egypt? There it is, Mir. All right? And actually, that's Meru, because that is the mouth of Ra, and it's called Ru, R-U. The owl is the M, and they use the E in order to give it a vowel sound. But it's Meru, and it means the guardian, the guardian. And this correlates perfectly with the fact that the emblem for the empire of the Tartarians actually was an owl, which is the same as in Egypt and the same as in America. 
All right. The plume serpent. The owl was the symbol of the plume serpent. Um, archaeologists, anthropologists, um, uh, archaeologists in particular says that birds um, evolved from the reptile. So here we have on the dollar bill in the upper right hand corner above the one, the owl represents truth, insightful power, and wisdom with the ability to see through darkness. All right. So you'll see the owl on the dollar bill. Right there. And then you go to the Bohemian Grove, they worship the owl, which many has mistranslated to be Moloch. But Moloch is not an owl. Moloch is a calf. So now we get to the Webster Dictionary again. We love Webster because they tell you the truth no matter how many years you go back. My teacher told me that um, in ninth grade. She said, if you ever need to go to look up anything, use Webster Dictionary. Now, Oxford Dictionary is even better, but we go with the Webster. Dictionary and Cassandra's. Now, look what it says. You have the word more, but then what you have in parentheses. Ho, oh, oh, ho, wait, 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 wait. Ain't that the same of what we just seen here? So, word more in mirror is the same way. Same word, same thing. So, when it goes here, it tells you, uh-oh, the following is the original name, application of the name what? So, miru or mirror is what word? More. More. Oh, there we go. We got our answer. There we go. We got our answer. All right. So they tell you who are the Moors? Uh oh, the Moors are the natives of America, originally applying to the Aboriginals or couple colored, couple colored races. This, the, uh oh, there they are. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yes, that's them. Oh, there it is. If your complexion or anyone in your family is similar to that of the copper colored penny, then your ancestors may have come from the copper colored races of the people the Europeans found in America. Yes, I believe so. There it is. Uh oh. There it is. More or mere. And when you have mores, you put an S on it, it becomes the plural meru. M E R U. Make it plural now. Ancient North Africans, people of mixed Berber and Arab descent. Now, this is before the Berbers, uh, 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 mixed ones, that is, and before the Arabs, who invaded and conquered Spain in the 8th century. And it says Moorish. So, from Mir to Moor, came in until now, this is a good book to get. In the 8th century AD, the Moors, native of Mauritania in North, America, in North Africa, invaded Spain and took with them Egyptian culture, which they had preserved knowledge in the ancient days was centralized. So the, as you see here, George D. James refers to Moors as the custodians of Egyptian, of Kemet knowledge or culture. So Moors are the custodians. Moors are the guardians. Moors are the custodians. Moors are the guardians. Okay? So, this is what we figured out. Alright, there it is. Moro, the word maru, or synonymous. Keeping in mind the vowels A-E-I-O-U-Y is interchangeable, thus more, mere, or synonymous as well. Emphasizing the word moraking. The Letter O is interchangeable with E for America or American, American. Barry W. Encyclopedia Heraldica. It says Mordecai became a derivative of more, thus American, American, Al Moroccan, or consistent. <laughs> there it is. This is how you end the confusion with all these Negroes who don't realize that the first Moors were black, all right? And we use the term black only because he said so in the book where they never told you in history class, but more the race as it occurs in Europe, heritry always means Negro, Moors head, say Barry, is the heretic term for the head of a black or Negro man. 
all right? This encyclopedia, um, um, Herodica, uh, volume three, page 68, 69, 1913. All right, so, all right? Even Chester Williams says the destruction of black civilization in the book, he says African blacks haven't, haven't even this name taken from them, must contend for recognition as Moors. So our scholars didn't have a problem before us having to be recognized as Moors, just these so-called RBG Negroes nowadays that think they know something. Uh, red, black, and green, but they don't even uh, understand that. Those sciences come from out of ancient Egypt, too, or from the Egyptian comedic people. Also, uh, even just to add in too, like there's a whole country that that they flag is called the Four Moors, and yes. so it's like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's four black dudes on it, so it's like, what you gonna say to the whole country? Right. So you look up Blackamoor. Blackamoor is what Ethiopian Negro. All right. Blackamoor is Ethiopian or Negro. Origin, Blackmoor. Also, Black Morian. Black Morian. Remember, we just looked at the word Morian. Remember? Morian. Uh oh. Go back. Morian. There it is right there. Morian. Morian is actually Morican. <laughs> if the Moors, if we if we're not supposed to be calling ourselves Moors, then why in the hell is it on the Federal Race Classification Code? Why is it at the CDC website and Moors the Code six six seven? And why is it at the uh, Massachusetts Bay Corporation. Hey, Dr. Lee, can I say something? Yes. So, according to the Peace and Friendship Treaty, that's why it's so important to understand the Peace and Friendship Treaty, because if you go down and read in the article um, 6, it says, any more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effect to his majesty they shall immediately be set at liberty and effected restored. And in any like manner, if any more not a subject of the dominion shall make prize of any of the citizens of America or their effects bringing them into any of the ports of his majesty, and they shall be immediately released. So that lets you know right there that even if a private servant pulls you over, which we call them a public servant, if they pull you over, if you read the piece and treat your friendship with them, they have to let you go automatically. Well, that's what's supposed to happen, yes. Because that is what they signed. That is what is law. So right. that right there also shows you, if you actually read the, tre- read the treaties, how more is implemented in it and how you should stand on your square when deviating, uh, I mean, when explaining yourself on more because more is also in the treaty. True. Peace and love. Peace and love. So here, Heritage Restored by Julius Rose. He said the word America was developed from the Metroneche name Maru, which means leader, chief, ruler, but we also seen that it means guardian. The word America is how the Greeks call Maru, which pronounces Amarukos from the South American Indians, Tupac Amaru. The word Amaru bears no relevance whatsoever to American Fanspewski. This word is also borrowed by the Arabic language as it's called Amir, which is Amaru, right? As in the shipping. And of course the Amaru is the head of a ship. Um, And when he moors the anchor to the coast or to the shore, I should say. Meaning ruler, chief, Governor Prince, all right? The European latest corruption of the word Meru means Moreau. If Cologne, Columbus discovered America, then why does Van Spusky enjoys the credit and honor of having the name after him? 
Well, that's because we found the real meaning. All right, so we'll come on down. All right, so um, let's look at this. The word black and all of its variances in languages have always connoted evil, misery, death. Moreover, the equally inappropriate term colored implies the individual described had been painted, varnished, stained, or dyed. All right. Um, right here it says Afro or African are terms which arose from the European name Africa branded upon the continent by the um, ancient Romans in honor of the Roman general Scipios Africanus, which is not how that happened. That is old information, which is not true. We just showed you earlier that the word Africa, Afuraka, actually is talking about the divine soul or spirit in the body, the temple um, of Ra, uh, of God. Um, that's what Africa really means. So this is where we have to separate the, um, the history, the facts from the mystery um, in this case, all right, um, or the mythology. Now, Scipio's Africanus, you can look this up even on um, Wikipedia. They say that he got this as a nickname, Africanus, for his defeat of Hannibal during the Second Punic War. All right. Yes. All right, sorry about that. My um, computer went out, so I got to come on down to where we were. So we seen earlier when we were talking about Lomoria 
and the Twa people within Lemuria. All right? Can everyone still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. All right, so we know, according to the information, that we was in Lemuria because the Twa people was in Lemuria, and there's several European authors or so-called Caucasians, Albions, in which that verifies this, all right? Um, we've seen that Charles, that um, Albert Churchward verified this, and now we see that James Churchward, which is his brother, in his book, The Lost Continent of Mu, which is Memorial, also verifies this. All right? He speaks about the pygmies being there. And that this strange civilization disappeared about 50,000 years ago. Right? As you see the line there, it says from out of Mu, you see the Negroid line, as you see, which cuts across South America into Atlantis, which are the Caribbean islands, into Africa. I right, get this book, Atlantis, the Antidevolian um, Luvians. Excuse me, World, the Classic Illustration Edition of 1882 by Ignatius Donnelly. Another book by Augustus Le Pontion. Yeah, I'm going to mute the background. So we know that we was not just in Africa, we was around the world. When they talk about Atlantis, when they talk about Lemuria, that was us. There's no doubt about it. As even verified by their authors. All right. So when we get here, we say that Atlantis was well, the Lemuria um, disappeared around 50,000 years ago, and then they asked a question about right here, well, this is from leaving South, Af South America, Dr. Albert Goodyear, a South Carolina University professor, say, humans lived along the east banks of Savannah, of the Savannah River 50,000 years ago. The 51,700 years old North American site found in Allendale County, South Carolina. We said, Brother Alex, huh? Uh, the the screen is showing an FBI warning. Okay. Can you see it now? It's still saying FBI one. It's still saying the same thing. Hmm. Huh? It's changed. Right. The additional names is up now. Okay. What about now? 
Ethiopia, yeah. Mexico. Okay. And these, of course, are the Omec hands in which that was discovered. Most of them was, when it was um, discovered, was actually covered back up. Because you see these lips and nose, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> there's, no, there's no hiding any longer. Bill, I'm sorry. All right, so, um, we see... <laughs> That's cool. That's cool food boat, ain't it? Yeah. Yo, we see that the ancient had boats. There's no doubt about that. Right? And allegedly, they sailed here to America during the 18th dynastic period under two different pharaohs. One was Heheshepsut, who was known in as Queen Sheba from the biblical text, as well as also um, individual known as Akhenaten or Unkunten. Right? Ancient Egyptian artifacts found in Mexico confirmed as authentic. Pyramid in Aztec archaeological sites of Mexico. Uh-oh. Sphinx found in Memphis, Tennessee, 1912. Oh, exploration in the Grand Canyon. Ancient Egyptian artifacts is found in the Grand Canyon. In two papers, Phoenix Gazette, Arizona um, Gazette. One was March 12, 1909. The other one was April the 5th, 1909. Inside the Grand Canyon, oh, what do you see? Uh-oh, a Sphinx. Egypt and South America has the same best symbol with the tongue hanging out. Symbol of the Ptah or the Tarhites in Peru, as in Kemet. Right, these are, according to Constantine Rafinique, the primitive black nations of America, 1832. He speaks about these people. The Manjipa and the Porcigis of Nayahof, the Motalia of Nefet, and etc. All of Brazil, brown Negroes with curly hair. Full size indigenous warrior statue of the pre Columbian Gold Museum. San Jose, Costa Rica. The pre Columbian artifacts of the National Anthropological um, Museum in Panama City, Panama. We wore gold, we rock gold, we still rock gold. When hip hop came in, shoot, we was rocking gold. All right, y'all might know these two right here. Slick Rick the Ruler, MC Ricky D, as well as also Ghost, Ghost Face Killer, Wu Tang Clan, nigga. Ain't nothing to fuck with. <laughs> 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 All right, Ali. <laughs> okay, so right here in 1505, Vasco Nuez de Boboa, as in Rocky Boboa, and the Spanish conquistadors, conquistadors encountered the first Negroes on the American continent, laced in gold, in Panama and Central America. Shortly before warring with them and later enslaving them in their own land. Just like they did us. During pre colonial times, indigenous Negroes in Panama had abundant gold artifacts and several gold mines exploited. Panama today holds over 200 billion in mineral resources. All right, this is the Royal Sphinx of Egypt. But then you have 
The same connections are in Chesanisa at the Omec Mayan Temple in South America. Actually, it ain't in South America. It actually is in Mexico. Chesanisa. Uh, you have the African Dogon village in Mali. Um, Native American Pablo. You have the um, African thatch houses in Kenya, and you have the Native uh, uh, American teepees. You have the African Dogon Badu dance, and you have the Apache Indian dance. You have the African Zulu chief, and you have the Aztec Indian chief. What we're showing you is that these are the similarities. You have the Kuba mass of Central Africa, and you have the Native American um, Hamash, uh, Hamats, um, sub -ma uh, mass. You have the African Mandingo dance, you have the Aztec Indian dance. African use of feathers, Indian use of feathers. Egyptian cook staff, Native American coop staff, or stick. So when you look up the word mound, it says hedge, fence, embankment, artificial elevation of earth or stone. It's called tumulus, tumulus, all right? The word tumulus, all right? And you find that there's tumulus all throughout Africa and around the world, I might add. It's not just here in America, all right? Get the book, Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx. Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx. All right, Herodotus boasts that their ancestors in the land of the West, which is the land of the plume serpent in America, were the oldest men on the earth. This is why the emperor said that we are the oldest people on planet earth. And put this in the record at the United Nations. And we are known as Moors. Exactly. All right, this is found in the Burrow Caves. We talked about this last week. Ancient um, African gold in Illinois, unearthed in ancient America, Nexus, New Times, um, Frontier Magazine, they all reported this, of these ancient Negroid, Moorish, indigenous stone artifacts at Burrow Cave in Illinois. Ancient Egyptian comedic artifacts here. And this is verified. We had um, our tour guide here to the right. Um, it was about 20 of us. All right. And this is back in on March two, um, 2013, on the 22nd. We went to Tulum, um, the Olmec Pyramid in Mexico. And this guy here told us specifically that, um, that the Nubian Egyptians built these pyramids. He said these pyramids were not built by, the, by, um, by us, by the Mayans. And he's Mayan, and he told us this. He said, and I'm Mayan, and I can tell you this. He said, we're not supposed to tell you this. He said, but something happened four years ago to make me have to tell you the truth. I said, yeah, Obama became president. Hmm. All right? Because that's, that's, that's what it was. That's what it was. Right, that's what it was. Obama became president. But well, he couldn't tell you until then. Right. Before that, they was lying to us, telling about, oh, yes, the Mayans built the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Ooh. I get this book, The African Presidents in Ancient America. They came before Columbus by Dr. Ivan von Sodoma. Get the African Presidents in America before Columbus by Floyd W. Hayes the Third. Mm -hmm. All these books that I'm giving you is proof of you being the oldest people on the face of the planet is proof of your nationality, is proof of who you are as a global, that's if you want to use the term globe, we would just say worldly people. You know, that, that's the best words that we can use for, you know, for the flat earthers. Who was that author name of Africans before Columbus? Yeah, that's Dr. Ivan von Sertema. Okay. Yeah, and um, another one you named too, Floyd Hayes. Floyd Hayes the third. Floyd the third. W. Hayes the third. Yes. And what's that book he wrote? He wrote the book called the 
African presence in America before Columbus. Okay. And of course, you know, we got another one here, which is the Omex, America's first civilization. And it's showing you who was here first. <laughs> Um, the great civilization of the ancient world, the Omex. Oh, it's by the Omex. Right. Well, I can't, I can't um, tell who it is, um, who it is, but I know these books exist because right. I've seen them. Matter of fact, I got that one to the right, the Omex, um, America's first civilization. But here you can also get the first um, um, Americans were Africans, documented evidence by Dr. Um, David M. Otep, Ph.D., but once again, he goes to the narrative of the fifty of the fifty thousand year period, like we showed um, about um, Allendale County, from the South um, Carolina professor um, Allen. Uh, not uh, what is his name? Let me see. Go back up right quick. Let me get his name right quick. Um, his name is um, Albert Goodyear, Dr. Albert Goodyear. He speaks right here of uh, 50,000 years ago. So really, um, they talk about the Egyptians being able to travel on the ocean and waters 50, over 50,000 years ago on up to the 18th dynastic period, showing and proving that we've come here over many impacts. But this is just, you know, over 50,000 years, which isn't much compared to as you've seen, how long we've been on planet Earth and how long we've been in the Western Hemisphere. Another 600 million years, we told you. Hey, Ali. Yes. Uh, is uh, David M. Hotel still alive? Yes. Uh huh. People might have to uh, get in contact with him personally because they took that book off. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. I just thought yeah. took the book off, brother? Yeah, uh, it's out of print. What? Okay. Remember, remember, it was six thousand dollars. Sure, well, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. Don't want you to have that information. Then I looked around. I had the book in my bookcase. Now the one I paid thirty bucks for it. I was glad because I wasn't gonna pay six grand. Right. Glad yeah. I got it too. Glad I got my copy. All right, so right here, when nations gathered, this is by Sultan Abdul Latif. Um, this is what he says in the book, the Mandingo black practice settled agriculture, and they must before have had settlements in South and Central America. But their traders, by the very nature of the occupation, were nomadic, even on the move, ever on the move. There were several bases from which African traders spread into two Americas. From the Caribbean in the Songhai period, from 1462 to 1492, from the northeastern South America to the Mandingo period of 1310 onward, into Peru. All right. This here is Sultan Abdul Latif. L A T I F. Sultan S U L T A N. Sultan Abdul. A contact between Native Americans and Africans could have been traced back to ancient and Mississippi Egyptian style pyramids, gigantic black statues with Negro faces, and other ancient monuments found in Mexico possess undeniable evidence that African people um, sailed to America as early as 800 BC. And once again, they're being very Conservative with that date. Right? Oh, we got it larger. All right, so right here, according to Dr. Clyde Winters, PhD, in 1300, many Malians sailed to the Americas. Also, many Malians settled in Brazil, Mexico, and built the mounds along the Mississippi River. Some Malians settled in Florida. All right? So, right here, on Columbus. This is for Columbus and the African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism by Dr. John Henry Clark. He says this, the name, the book was renamed, The Africans, Christopher Columbus, and the Myth of the New World. It must also be added that America Van Specio in his voice to America witnessed the main wrinkles of Mali and Songhai Empire, later identified as the Moroccan Empire, 
out in the Atlantic, returning to Africa. So they was returning to Africa. They were returning from America to Africa. All right? It's what they say. They wrote about this. So here it is. The Maya vase depicted a black noble wearing a Moorish turban. Mm-hmm. Right? This is 800 AD. And what they doing? They worshiping him. They, they carrying him. So the ships from Mali did make it to America. This is Guatemala. Right, this is actually a painting allegedly of Christopher Columbus, the voice of Columbus, as it is called, who was an English painter. Right, this name is Arthur um, Cadwag, um, who was an English painter and illustrator. The painting is an illustration from the book, This Country of Ours, The Story of the United States, by Harriet Elizabeth Marshall. All right? This is 1917. So... We thinking that Columbus was an Albion when according to the painting, at least, he was melanated. This proves that the Aztecs were black people. All right. Um, as you see here, Montezuma was a man of middle size, thin, and like all Indians, of a very dark complexion. So here we have the Dulles people, that um the Algonquin people, the Powhatan, the Shinnecock, um, the Tutine, um, a scene uh uh, Iboni, the Navajo, the Ananuia, um, the, um, the Kil Sinai, the Choctaw, the Kippopo, and the Mi'kmaq, uh, not the Mi'kmaq, but the Miyako, the Miyokonjo, um, which is the Kota, right? These are all so-called black people that we refer to them as nowadays, all right? Islam. 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 All right, so. Watch to nation. All right. We find the connection between the Bahamas, all right, and the Bahamians or indigenous to America. We have what is called the Junkanoo, um, which originated in America. Not Africa. Count out the um. Check out the outfit similarity. All right. And this is Big Chief Tutti Montana. All right. That's him. Um. And so you find that in the Bahamas they have what is called the um the junk canoe. Well, you have the same outfits in Louisiana, New Orleans. When they have their um. And look at the face. The same face that's on the Redskins is on his garb, as you see here. Because he's the Redskins. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I had to change the look. Yeah. My city had you too. Uh, this is my Indian. Yep. Bugger. Them bugger. Well. Is that what they call them now? No, I'm just talking about them. No, you just talking about them, guys. Yeah, Ohio. All right, so here we find always some people that they're trying to rename. So here it is. Check this out. It says, um, well, West Africa is one-third Negro, the crudest type of Negro on American. Um, so, uh, here it is. What kind of people do live in South America? The Spanish, the Portuguese, but chiefly the these European races who have intermarried with the Indians. Other nations have made lesser contributions. Brazil, which is only a few days by steamer from West Africa, is one third Negro, the crudest type of Negro on the American hemisphere. There is a strong mark of the Moor upon the Spanish. Well, yeah, hell, they ruled Spain for. 800 years. The Arabic Moor morphed in custom very deeply into the life of Spain. The people of Mexico and Cuba might be called Moorish Americans. White Mexico and Cuba may be called Moorish American rather than Latin American. The customs, manners, and hard experiences of these people of Latin America are more Moorish than Christian. What more book is that you read from, Mommy? More Arabic than Spanish. World Outlook. World Outlook. 
World Outlook. Okay. Right. That's the name of the book. Was World Outlook. Uh, real quick, Ali. Yes. Since we know that uh, the Feds is older than uh, Turkey, why do a lot of them guys from over there always want to re- reference the tar bush to Turkey? Well, I mean, you can go you can go to China and find the tar bush. They wear them. They wear them in China. So it is it, is a hat from all over the world of those in royal positions or high positions or some type of uh, military position. So we probably went from there and how it same huge influence over there. Exactly. So here it is. It says great deception and obfuscation concerning the Moors who penetrated by Columbus and the Catholic Church. The Moors, not incorrectly, can trace back their history on the American continent to thousands of years before Columbus in what was an ancient civilization that included the Olmecs and virtually every other mound or pyramid in the Americas. All right? The Americas was part of a maxim, a region that included Africa and part of Asia. This data is in the um, Vatican archives. It's in the Vatican archives. So now we come down. The Iroquois was not a race of people per se, but consisted of several different tribes and clans which spoke the same language and operated under the most powerful and workable of the government known at the time. We go up. It says the Montauk was Moors. The Montauk was Moors. Where, what is that from? Um, this is from, uh, let me see. Okay. I got it over here. Uh, shoot. I don't, I, don't, I don't have it on this slide presentation. Ain't that Portuguese or West Africa? Yeah. All right, so the Osage, Kwa and the Kwakpa speaks the same language with slight dialectic differences. The Osage and the Kwa are both very dark skinned. So the Montaco Moors, the Osage and Kwa and Kwakpa, both are very dark skinned. Here they are. Tell me that. Tell me that brother don't look like um, your uncle um, Buford. Wait, this is a map of the tribes in which they dominated. As you see, the Cherokee dominated and was the largest tribe and still is the largest tribe even to this day. And as you see, the Cherokee dominated all the way from North Carolina to Texas. The five, the five, um, Civilized tribes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The treaty that was made. Treaty of peace and friendship. Oh, you talking about the Washington? You talking about the Treaty of um, Washington, or what we call the Wichita um, Treaty of Camp Holmes? Yeah, that was right there. So as you see, Choctaw is in the state of Alabama, on into going into Louisiana, Mississippi. I should say Louisiana, Mississippi. All right. Um, Cherokee was also with the creek, was all up in there. The Muscogee, which is the creek, was in, um, which is also the Seminoles. All right. All right. Yeah, Navajo. Look at that. Navajo was all the way up 
Now, you would think the Navajo was all the way where, as you see? Out west. Was out west. From, from, from Colorado, Arizona, all the way into California. Mm -hmm. But as you see, they was up in New York, too. <laughs> the Navajo was in New York. Well, guess what? We find that in North Carolina, there was also Mayans. The Navajo, as you also see, was also in the Hawaiian Islands. Look at that. Oh, shit now. Just making this come real to you. They go to five civilized tribes that we're talking about. The Washoe was a Negroid tribe living above the New Orleans Bayou. It has been said to produce the Yamasee. And so, basically, the Yamasee is the mother tribe, the Creek, Seminole, Apa um, um, Appalachian, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, the Catawba, the Cherokee. So the Yamasee produced the Cherokee, as you see here. That spread it throughout. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen states. In 1866, during the civil rights, uh, excuse me, during the Civil War, the last leader of the Cherokee Nation that was Muslim was named Rahmat Ibn Wati. And as you see, look at his hair, look at his features, you tell me who he is with his turban on his head. Okay? What's his last name? Wati, W A T I. So the Yamasee is the mother tribe of all of these tribes. All right? We will find out what the Yamasee spoke in a second here. That they were the mother of all these tribes. So that means that all these other tribes would have spoken what? A similar dialect of what the Yamasee spoke, right? And that includes the Creek, Seminoles, Avalanche, Choctaw, Ch Chickasaw, Cherokee. Now, hold up. And Chickasaw. Now, remember, these are the five civilized tribes, y'all. Creek, Seminole, Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Cherokee. Those are the five civilized tribes. Here it is. Five civilized tribes, Cherokee, Choctaw, Muscogee, which is Creek, Chickasaw, and Seminole. So if they are the children of the Yamasee, and then the Yamasee are the children of the Malian Moors and Washoe, which is the Washita, who came from out of Mexico, then we're getting somewhere with the science of language. Right? This is the Wars of the Seminoles. You might want to get these books, The Unconquered. The Florida Negro Wars, and they talked about that. The Seminole Wars, America's longest Indian conflict. The Florida Seminole Wars, and then the Seminole Wars. I'll go back here, just in case you get these. Um, um, Tolobi Ogunliye. The other one is Anthony E. Dixon. And if you add up the Seminole Wars, if you add, which is the Yamasi or Yamasi Wars, and you add up the Gullah Geechee Wars, those were the same people related, and the wars lasted almost 100 years. So this 1835 shit to 1842 is not the real wars, the longest wars. As you see here, they changed the dates to 1817, now to 1858. As you see on this one, they changed the dates from 1880, um, 18 to 1858. But here, they give you only the wars between 1835 to 1842. And they don't even give you the wars between, of the, um, of the um, as you see here, the Yamasee and the Gullah Geechee Wars. Because those, these wars and the Seminole Wars, these wars lasted a hundred years. 
almost a hundred years, we was damn whooping their ass in these areas. So here, Brigadier General Sidney Jessup, he tells you, June 1837, in the American State Papers, Military Affairs, cited Kenneth W. Porter, the Negro on the American Frontier, New York, 1971. He says, this, you may be assured, is a Negro, not an Indian war. And if it be not speedily put down, the South will feel the effects of it on their slave plantations before the end of the next season. If the war be carried on, it would necessarily be one of extermination. Well, guess what? They couldn't exterminate us. There it is, the unconquered. They couldn't exterminate us. <laughs> they could not exterminate us. So what happened? They had to do it through paper. They couldn't win the physical war, so they had to write the shit through paper. <laughs> this is how they had to do genocide. They had to do paper genocides. Individual by the name of, um, what's his name? Walter uh, Plucker. Yeah, Walter Plucker. He plucked your ass out of your nationality. <laughs> All right? He go to war. As you see here, uh oh, these are supposed uh, Africans. Uh oh, this one African not only got turbans on their heads, but they got fans on their heads in the painting. As you see, the Albion head is cut off. He looked like he was a KKK member, as you see. <laughs> he got that long ass robe on and that sash. You see that? Yeah. KKK got his goddamn head cut off, y'all. <laughs> in the drawing, in the painting. And we got on the feds and we got on turbans. Okay? So that's why he said, you can be assured, goddammit, that this is not an Indian war. This is a Negro war. <laughs> and you better get your shit together, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so our family owned all of America with their pre-black, pre-colonial, aboriginal nations identity until the United States Corporation stripped our grandparents of their self-government and land title um, by reclassifying our grandparents from Indians to legal fictions, landless, meaningless, black, Negro, mulatto, colored, African-American on census records, and they're still doing it today, as now you are African-American. So among the other black nations who existed in America long before Columbus, long before Jesus Christ was, was the Yamasi or Yamasi, the Indians who had a large kingdom in the southeastern United States. They're these were among the first blacks of pre-Columbian of um, American origin to fall victim to kidnapping for the purpose of enslavement. The descendants of the Yamasi are the millions of blacks who live in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Northern Florida. All right, this is um, author um, Alfred, um, Paul Alfred Barton. He wrote the book in which that this comes from, A History of the African Omex. All right. Another book, Carolina Genesis Beyond the Color Line. Um, you can get that book, and this goes into it right here. The Yamasi Indians, or Yamasi, also referred to as the Amoro Orikakin and the Amar Karisi, and the Amir, the Amir Kario, the Amir, as in Amiru, were listed among the 19 tribes as being of dark complexion, found widely scattered among the inhabitants of North and South America. They were assumed to be immigrants from Africa prior to European discovery of America, whom Lucas Vaquis uh, uh, de Alion persisted in slave hunting in Beaufort, South Carolina in 1520. All right? Um, Alion refers to the Yamasi as Negroes being valuable Liberals. So, the Hidden Creek language of Yamasee. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We just finished showing you that the Yamasees has produced the Creek. So it ain't the damn Creek language. It's the Yamasee language. But this is what they're always doing. They're always trying to trick the nigga. Once thought ex extinct, the most influential Native American nation has resurrected. The most influential. Native American nation has resurrected. The Yamasi Native Americans thought it has returned. I ain't know we won any damn way. Being called one of the bloodiest wars in the Creek 
Muscogee people, the Yamasee Wars of 1715. Hold up, now it goes to 1715. I just showed you that it was fighting all the way into the damn 1858. This is more than a hundred years wars. Do you see how you see how the Albion tried to trick a knuckle? <laughs> the Yamasees, which history shows is comprised of the Gele, Tama, Uchi, Cherokee, Wichita, Creek, and more, as described by the governor of South Carolina, Crape. He made claims of all the tribes in that region was Yamasee. Oh. Okay. Here they are. Is how the Yamasees look. Oh shit! Now, Matt Spaniards found one Yamasee Negro being the ten Indians for work, and they therefore exported the Indian Negroes and carried them to the West Indies to experiment with as slaves. This is from the United States Congressional Records, Congressional Series Set, United States Government, written this fifty seventh con- Congress first session. House of Representatives, document 179. See, you said you, you got all of this shit. You, you don't even want to look through the damn books with all these damn long-ass title names, right? <laughs> so here, the Yamasee men were fishing back, and the, and the um, Seminole men married, um, married the Yamasee's women, right? This Pensacola Gazette, October the 9th, 1824. Just remember, the Yamasee War, 1715, right? All the way into the 19th century, Whenever a Seminole appeared to be darker than his fellows, it was said that his Yamasee ancestry was showing. This is Florida Anthropology, Volume 23-24. Okay, here they are. These are the black Seminole scouts. These are the Seminole scouts. Not with, not with the long hair like you've been seeing with the Mon- Mongoloid Indians, but these are the short nappy heads. All right? The ones that you used to. All right? So right here it says the Black Seminole Scouts bandit, um, circa 1870, about 50 in number, 50 in number, um, served as skilled trackers and distinguished themselves in numerous military engagements. All right? So this was 1870. So this was after we whooped the ass. They had to bring us on in. They look, now, y'all damn, y'all niggas gonna whoop our ass so damn bad. You had to bring all on our side. Hmm. <laughs> That's what happened. All right? That's what happened. Just look at the times. That tells you what happened. All right? So, we know, as we just finished seeing, the Yamasee is the mother of these various tribes, the Cherokee. And so when we get down to here and we find out that the treaty that was written, all right, called the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. It was signed on the Delaware River by those who were Cherokee. There are other Muslims in our group. All right, well, there we go. For most Muslims and non-Muslims of today, this type of information is unknown and has never been mentioned in any of the history books. There are many documents, treaties, legislation, and resolutions that have passed between 1600 and 1800 that shows the Muslims, Muslims were in fact here and were very active in the communities in which they lived. Treaties such as peace and friendship that was signed on the Delaware River in the year 1787 bears the signature of Abdullah Kat and Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Bey. All right, he was a Bey. This treaty details our continued a right to exist as a community in the areas of commerce, maritime, shipping, current forms of government at the time, which was in accordance with Islam. According to the federal court case from the Continental Congress, we have put the breath of life into the newly framed Constitution. Now, we showed you all this before. So, it says that they was the, the sultans were Cherokee. So, who was the sultans? They came from the Yamasee. And who was the Yamasee? Once again, who was the Yamasee? Let's go up. The Yamasee. Let's go up. Here it is. The Yamasee mixed in with the Malian Moors. Remember? Remember that? So here it is. Let's look at it. Yamasee is the mother tribe of Creek. Seminoles of Appalachian, Choctaw, 
Chickasaw, Catawba, and Cherokee, as well as many other tribes. As well as many other tribes. All right? So, once again, it has been said that the Washo, which is Washito, mixed in with the Malian Moors, and they produce who? The Yamasi. Who produce who? So, the Malian Moors. All right? We showed you all who was the Malian Moors. Earlier, the Malian Moors were known as the people, the 25,000 people, y'all, that came here by way of Abu Bakari II on 2,200 ships. That's how they came over here. This is Abu Bakari II, who was the richest man in the world. He gave up the riches of his kingdom and brought his tribesmen over here to America, 25,000 of them. Goddamn city. This is before Columbus, 200 years before Columbus. Now you got to think about it. Anybody that Columbus found here, to them or to him, they was indigenous. Because they was here before he got here. Okay? So we find out that the Malians were the ones who was building the mounds along the Mississippi River. So the Washita mixed in with the Malian Moors, did you get us as being the Washita Moors? We produced the Yamasi, which is the priest tribe of ours. The word Yamasi actually comes from uh, Masi is Mashiach, which means the messengers. <laughs> they go forth and they produce the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Seminole, the Muskogee, which is the Creek, and the Chickasaw, and many other tribes, as you see. And this correlates perfectly with the Treaty of, of what they say, the Treaty of Peace of Friendship with the Comanche and the Wichita Indians, as they called us. And it says right here, the Comanche and Wichita Nations and the associated band or tribes of Indians and between these nations or tribes and Comanche, right here, and Comanche and Wichita Nations, it says, and the associated bands or tribes of Indians between the nation of tribes and the Cherokee, the Muskogee, the Choctaw, the Osage, the Seneca, the Quakpa, nations of these Indians. So all of these was our ancestors, was our people. Because as you see here, they say the Wichita and their associated bands, nations, and tribes. In other words, our children. <laughs> our children. So this is why the Empress was able to go forth and state at the United Nations that we, the Washoe, are the oldest indigenous people on earth. Yeah. Because the Yamasi comes from us and the rest of all these tribes, as you see here. So this shows you once again, and he, he already told you the Yamasi was, he said, God damn it, this is not a, a Indian war, this is a Negro war. <laughs> In other words, these jokers are very dark skin. <laughs> All right, so we understand right here the barbarians were the term most frequently used by our author to designate the Moors or Muslims of southern Spain and the Maghreb. He used other terms too Moors, Pagans, Hagarins, Ishmaelites, Chaldeans, Moabites. Amorites, and Saracens. So he used all these terms interchangeable with the term Muslim. The Moors. All right? So we know that the Malian Moors, the barbarians, as they refer to us as, or the Berbers, which is really what the name comes from, is the word Berber. The Ethiopians was known as the Berbers, or the Barbara. And you see here, look at that. C. Berber were the descendants of Babar. Babar. And who's the Babar? The name Kush can be found from India to Africa and the Middle East. They were the Babar, as you see here. All right, so these are the Malian Moors. All right, these are also the Phoenicians, the Canaanites. Look down. Is it noteworthy that some of them, like the Ethiopians and the Canaanites, spoke 
Semitic and not Hamitic languages. So they are Semitic. And here it is to become further down. And it says, the original country of the Philistines before the immigration into Palestine is the original home of the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, who spoke a Semitic language. So, they keep telling us over and over again who is here. You get the name Kush, Nubian, Land of Black, Ethiopia, Ethiopic, Greek for Black people, Sudan, Sudan, um, Arabic for Black people, Egypt, um, Egyptus, Latin for Dark people. So it keeps showing you over and over again who came here, who was already here, as we showed you over 600 million years ago. All right? So these are all tricks. So here it is, the old world root of the Cherokee, how DNA, ancient al um, alphabets, and religion explains the origin of America's largest Indian nation. So here it is. The Indians, known as the so-called Cherokee, was produced by the Yamasee, and the Yamasee came from the mixture of the Washita, who's known as the Washo, and the Malian Moors. Wait, the Cherokee, too, within their DNA, shows that they are Phoenicians, Moors, Berbers, Punic, Canaanites. Now, if you didn't know that all five of those are the same people, historically. All right? Even the so-called Jewish, Melungeon, Carthaginian, Turks, Greeks, the original Greeks were the Minoans and the Cretans, the Mesopotamian, Egyptian, North African, the Nanakotes, all right? The Nanakotes, if you don't know, all the, low, all the um, and, and see, they told you that the Nanakotes are also the Lenape. So the, also, the grandfathers of the Cherokee are the Lenape, who is known as the Nanakotes, which is the Washita, who is known as the grandfathers of all the other so-called, quote-unquote, American tribes. Here it is, uh, Origin of the Indians, by E. Rutledge, Rutledge, 1788, Joe. He says this, now check this out. He said, your philosophy on the descent of the Creek Indians is from where? Carthaginians. <laughs> so we just told you that the Creek Indians were who? The Yamasee people. And then they tell you that they came from the Carthaginians just like the Cherokee. This means that they were what? Wars. The same people. The same people. So see, this is the trick that they've been doing, trying to separate us. What are we trying to separate? Look at this. They are among reputed ancestors of the original, aboriginal American Indian population, natives, or who? Moors and Turks. <laughs> and that's the original Turks, that is. Get the book, The Moorish Empire, Historical Epitome by um, Budget uh, Meekin. And he said there was indeed a Moorish Empire here, or at least discovered America first, and had international treaties with the Indians since they ruled not just Spain, but the whole earth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. The whole earth. Get the book. We are not just Africans, the black Native American. This is by Clyde Winters. He said, we're not just Africans, is the title of my book, because Afro-Americans are more than descendants of Sub-Saharan African. We have been lied to about black history. Our ancestors include black Europeans and black Native Americans. When I was growing up, my mother made it clear that we was part Choctaw. So in 1968, 1969, I took a survey in my high school, the Sabo, all right, in Chicago, and found that over 40% of my classmates had Indian heritage. Uh, Ancestry.com right. What was the name of that book by Clyde Winters? We're Not Just Africans. Okay. Yep, that's the name of it, Brother Al. Oh, and I just right. want to show you this. This is allegedly the real Nikola Tesla. <laughs> Y'all been used to this Nikola Tesla here on the right-hand side. 
But unless you, this is the real Nikola Tesla, uh, we'll get into that uh, at a later time. But here, we just talked about the nanocoats who are um, the Delaware Moors, the fathers or grandfathers of the quote unquote Lenape people. Now, look at this. It says, Revisiting the Delaware Moors. Well, who's the Delaware Moors? We come down, and it says, I don't know it at the time, but C.A. Uh, West Lager had mentioned a similar tongue and cheek explanation of the I label in his book, Delaware Forgotten Folks, The Story of Moors and Nanocoats. This is the book right here. And so me, I, you know, I always got to have a little jokey joke up in there. I go back to Jay-Z's uh, recent animation, The Story of O.J., off his 444 album, he said, light nigga, light nigga, dark nigga, fuck nigga, real nigga, rich nigga, poor nigga, house nigga, feel nigga, still nigga. <laughs> so that is the answer to this here. He says, when I was a teenager, when I first heard someone use the term more to refer to a member of Central um, Sexton County multiracial community, which claims and celebrates Native American ancestry, more question mark. I asked, confused, thinking of Northern Africa, what that means. And this is what most people think when they hear the word more, that it's just Northern Africa. The response was quick like a punchline, more nigger than anything. <laughs> more nigger than anything. All right? So, but the local term more as an ethnic label doesn't seem to have originated as a racial slur. Of course it did. In fact, the so-called Delaware Moors identify themselves as Moors. Once again, in fact, the so-called Delaware Moors identify themselves as Moors. So if the Lenape or Moors coming from the Nanocoats, and the Nanocoats are the which is the Washington that produced the Yamasee, you see that all this is the same family. Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Seminole, Muscogee, which is the, as well as many others, we all have the same ancestry. But see, they want to lie to you. But when you get to the word nigger, he says more nigger than anything. Well, hold on, what the word nigger means? Uh oh, look at it. Nigger has been also been offensive, derogatory term applied to who? Ooh. By the Moors. Wow, this is from Word and Phrase Origin, fourth edition. As well as blacks up until recent times. So, why was the name nigga applied to Indians? Because obviously they were just that damn dark. You don't believe me? Here go to Cleveland Indians. We just talked about it, goddammit. Right? The Birmingham niggas. <laughs> Once again, what is a nigga? A dark skinned person of any origin. <laughs> so if you are an American Indian, as it says in the early United States, the Jews usually were referenced to American Indians. American Indians. The term nigga was used with American Indians. Wow. That's why you have the Cleveland Indians. And then you have the Alabama Indians. But hold up. That's the same damn face. All they did was um, strain out the head, throw a damn fuck on the back of his, on the back of his head. But that's the same face. Yep. <laughs> See, this is the thing we've been playing. Nigga. Oxford English Dictionary. A Norskian person of any origin in the United States usually in reference to American Indians. Usually offensive. Once again, they keep telling you that it's Native Americans who are niggers. No, not a nigger. <laughs> telling you this. Other names used to divide these people are Creek, Cherokee, Hopi, Iroquois, Anasazi, Adena, Hakem, Hopewell, Mississippian, Micmac, Moore, uh, Minyaka. Mohawk, all right? We can go on and on with the names, all right? We are indigenous, not Indians, but indigenous. This is coming from real other Washington. 
right? Like Ra, um, Paul A, um, Umar Shabazz Day. So, we talked about earlier that the moon top was so called black people. Now, hold up. This is the shit about what are they, what was they, this is in 1953, what was they then? Yes, it's the Shinnecock in the um, yes, it's the Shinnecock Indians and the Montauk Indians. We told you earlier that the Montauk were so called black people. Well, what are they still? What would you call them? You call them Grandma and Granddaddy, Uncle oh. Bill, Uncle Bob, Auntie, uh, 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 Grandma Hattie. Right here? Yeah. Look at them. Yeah. Look at them. Yeah. That's why they're called still nigga. Yeah. You get it? This is why. You can't you won't get a closer look. I'm gonna give you one real close up. This is a turkey. This is steak. You know niggas love Thanksgiving. My <laughs> Uh huh. Right there? Right there. Right there? Yeah. At the head of the table. That's what she had. She's the oldest. She had the head of the she table. Was, that was, yeah, I got, got older. She was older. Mm hmm. Montauk declared too black to be native in the court in 1910. Oh, no, niggas. Y'all don't be too black for me. Yeah. You see? What we find out? We find out that. The Montauk, the Shinnecock, all was part of the Lenape Empire, and the Lenapes are the Nanakos, and the Nanakos are the Washo, and the Malian Moors, who are the Yamasi, who is the Chicktaw, the Chickaw, the Chick, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, the Creek, the Seminole, all of the all of the same people. They've been trying to trick us for so long. And now we got the truth. What is her name? Heru. The... Grand Sheik Heru Set L. Set L. H E R U S U T E L. So here it is. Iroquois and the Lenape Empire, they call Algonquin, was a corruption of the Lenape word, Agomequin. Right? So, this is the whole area that they was at. You got the Lenapes, which is in Delaware, Maryland, New York, Pennsylvania, on up into um, upstate New York, all the way into also Con um, Connecticut, actually, um, and New York City. New York City? Oh, see. The Nana Coast and the Moors. This is the, the Nanakos and the Moors, folk medicine. This is the Delawares, Shoni, Seneca, Mohican, and other Eastern Indians claim that their forefathers originally received their knowledge of Matapa Tikun from a tribe called the Nanakos. All right? He speaks about the Aboriginals who called themselves Moors and Nanakotes. The Nanakote Moors, the Lenape Moors, the Washita Moors. You see something going on here? They're very similar. The use of the word Moors. <laughs> you see this? No, no more trickery for us. So right here, the Lenny Lenape, the oldest people on earth, the nation of Lenny Lenape was one of the most serious important tribes, excuse me, nations of Moors in the United States of American history. This is due to the fact that if you were for us, there would have been no United States of America. When William Penn first arrived at our country, he was given permission by the Sagamores to set up his government. He was not, um, he was not sold land, he was given land to occupy. The Sagamores never sold land because they understood that it was not ours to land to give. He knew that the earth was and still is a gift from great spirit, all right, Manito, as he chose people, stewards, by a grand shekel, a shekel, all right? So here it is. The territories of the Nazi was extensive. 
This is why a large portion of the United States had to not be named in the names of the states such as Mississippi, Michigan, Connecticut, Illinois, Minnesota. Now, these names of the Lenape are the exact same names of the Cherokee. So when they talk about the Cherokee, they talk about the Lenape. I told you. Okay, see, this is the trick. This is the trichnology. Which is the Washita. This is all the trichnology. So is, so is that one of the laws of the land? That That's what, how it used to be. Now you better get some. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way that it was. And see, this is when you pin here, drawing the way you pin. And this is right here. He tells you how they lost it. Check this out. Delaware Moore. He says, one thing has no. Is that she was raised? Yes, the Spanish Wars wrecked on the coast more than a century ago. Another tradition represents them as descendants of the Nanako Indians, because in their tradition they say Nanako Indians. Remember? So, hey, Ali. Yes. Is that Empress on your end that's talking? By chastising you right now. Um, let me see. Looks like she's about to whoop somebody. Yeah, she getting ready to whoop, whoop that ass. She getting ready to whoop that ass. Yes. Please mute your background. Yes. Okay. Come here. What well, is your action appropriate? I'm talking about the sister who get ready to sister who get ready to that ass and then in the second half. Your very act is taking your own life in risk. What's the problem with you? You might have to mute her because you can't yeah. get anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to find her talking. I know ain't nobody there we go. All right, so right here, this is this is how uh, William Penn describes the Delaware Moors, the Lenape Moors. He tells you how they look. Go up here. He says, for their person, they are generally tall, straight, well built, of a singular proportion, and they tread strong and clever, and mostly walk with a lofty chin. Of complexion, what he says? Black. The same as they call your ass nowadays. And this was written back in damn 16, what? 1683. 1683. William Pitt, where they get the name Pennsylvania from. The state was named after him. All right, so he tells you how the Lenape's look. He tells you that it was black. So everybody, I didn't show you that's supposed to be Native American, according to the Europeans, they were the niggas. They, they look black. Is that, is, that, is that what we can prove from this? So this is your ancestry, not just Africa, all right? Not just Africa. Let me see here. All right. You know, I learned, uh, the term more is a powerful word, brother. Yeah. It said land. I am the land. I am the land of the earth. I am the, I am the land of the four corners of the earth. Right. That's what, that's what they don't like us saying that. Yeah, they don't like that. They don't like that terminology. But we keep finding these connections over and over again. I got a brother who um, say he's going to not be, but he ain't no more. And I'm like, well, okay. Right, I heard that before too. Yeah, oh, he's, that's that turtle he's, he, he, he's Lenape. Yeah, I know exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Look at it. You weren't <laughs> supposed to be. You were not supposed to be saying the names, Arishis. 
I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, snap. So, this is what we find, y'all. So, this is all the misleading that they have done. But due to research, we have found that they have been lying and we found the truth. Real quick, Eileen, don't, don't y'all got a uh, paper together? Yeah, we got a website, a uh, uh, website together too, uh, yeah. Facebook page together too. Yeah. Oh, that is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Ain't it? Did he yeah. ever say why he uh why he do that? Is it is it the Temple Moors that he be mad at and he do yeah. that? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Cause I be trying to figure it out. Right. Right. I'm so funny, so I got together. Oh, who is this y'all talking about? Who is this y'all talking about? His name Turtle Gang. Oh, Turtle Gang. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it, he got another name, uh, but uh, yeah, you can you can look him up by that though. <laughs> yeah, he confused, man. <laughs> Page, 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 page. Can I jump on that? Can I jump on that real quick? Yes. Um, okay, guys. When it comes when it comes to this more movement, you got a lot of individuals that are straight up agents. Right. They might be an agent directly or indirectly, meaning they was taught. And indirectly meaning they was taught by an agent. So, and, you know, many of the triple, many of the triple moors fall into that um, category as those who have been taught by agents, some of them are direct agents, and, you know, really geared towards trying to undermine what the actual moors movement is about, you know, and, and trying to turn it into something that is a club or something that's religious in nature. You know, in the modern connotation of the word, and, you know, you got to you got to be mindful of that. You know, when you're traveling, because it's, it's, there's many different more body politics that are active, such as Washita, Great Seal, stuff like that. But then you come across these, you know, many of these simple moors, and many of them are have been infiltrated. So you got to you know you got to be mindful of that because they'll try to steer you into thinking that. So I, I, I've come across more that will try to tell you that you're not a moor because you ain't a part of the temple. Right. But when you go back to 1492 or, or beyond 1492, they were moors. They didn't have nothing to do with the moors on the temple of America. You right. had moors right over here in America. Right over here in America after 1492. That ain't had nothing to do with the moors on the temple of America. The, the moors no, because the moors had birthright. The introduction into your history and your culture and your nationality. It's reintroduction. It's your birthright. <laughs> exactly. It don't necessarily mean you need to be a member of it in order to reclaim your birthright. And many of them are straight up 14th Amendment citizens. That say exactly. They straight up Negroes. Um, me and the Moor ain't got nothing to do with a temple at all. Exactly. Okay. As, as, we have, as we have figured that out, <laughs> Cause then we will have to ask, well, um, what about um, me being a Lenape more? <laughs> what about me being a Nanakote more? They use the term more. Are they part of your temple, nigga? Since you want to be king of the since you want to be king of the Moors, is that part? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I had to say to me, no, I ain't more a Muslim. <laughs> I said you don't know your history then. You <laughs> sure don't. Exactly. <laughs> so right here we yeah, have the first... that... Go ahead, God. Yeah, I was just saying more ain't something that you believe in. <laughs> right. But they think it's a religion. No, it's not. <laughs> Everything is a religion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Oh no, nigga! I don't want to stop being pork. Yeah, yeah. Much of that, much of that is accredited to them temple moors that come under Kirkland Bay. Hold on, ain't moors Muslim? 
Man, I gotta have my poke. Man, I gotta have my poke. <laughs> uh, peace, peace, brothers. This is Taylor Bay. Peace. What is that, June? It's long. It's long. Yeah, I've been, uh, I just got the link, so I just tuned on in. Okay. I'm trying to introduce myself and get to know the brothers. All right. Is that Tillery? Yes. Yeah. Is that Tillery Bay? Peace, brother. Peace. How are you, man? I'm at peace. All right. I know yeah, that voice, just, boy. All right, so right here, <laughs> oh, right. in 1890, this book, the first Mohawk conference. Now, hold on, who are the Mohawks? Who have you heard of history called the Mohawks? What called Native, Native, North? I remember the Empress called them Mo- Murhawks or Mohawks. Yeah, Murhawks or Mohawks, but the first Mohawk conference. Why are they talking about the Mohawks and then on the damn line after? On the Negro question, why at the damn first Mohawk conference they talking about the Negro question? If the Negroes on the Mohawks, <laughs> How I know the Negroes on the Mohawks because it's right in the last sentence. I therefore nominate him as the chairman of the first Mohawk conference on Negro affairs. <laughs> and how you know that they talking about Negroes affairs is the same as Indian affairs? Go up to the next, go up to the next uh, um, paragraph. Mr. Smith, ladies and gentlemen, many of you are probably aware that for the first last seven years, we held in the autumn near close to our season a conference on Indian affairs. Uh, so Indians or the Negroes? So they seem to have both the same affairs at this first Mohawk conference. Huh? Okay. You don't believe it? Well, I can give it to you right here. The Mohawk the Giants. The Senecate and the Negro League. The light niggers of me. Mohawk. Mohawk Giants. See? Oh, here go the original paintings of black Mohawk Indians in Moore's garb. Oh! See, I'm going to destroy every goddamn facet that you had in your mind concerning that we ain't the original people on this landmass, too. I'm going to destroy it. Look where the Mohawk was, and what state is that? Y'all know what state that is? That's New York. That's New York. New York, New York. New York. New York. Uh, yes. Oh, and the Mohawk is part of the Iroquois Confederation. So that means the Iroquois was what color too? The Moors. Ah. Copper color. <laughs> Copper color. So you had the five civilized tribes and you had the five nations of the Iroquois. All of them were Negros. <laughs> Negros. <laughs> What you doing? You joining? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seneca Village. Oh, Seneca Village. Did you say something about Seneca Village, which existed in New York City, which was what? Central Park. Yeah, it's Cayuga. It's kind of like Cuyahoga, which is the county in the uh, county. Ohio. Yes. It is. One in the same. High Hooker River. Yes. Okay, so these are the pictures that they told us that this is Queen Charlotte Sophia, and this is also King George the Third, and this is who the Europeans was breaking away from because they no longer wanted to be under their rule. Actually, let's find out. Knights Templars, black rulers of Bavaria, Germany, and England were black Muslims too. Oh, shit. It went for, it went for one... Uh uh, 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 more, and ran into other Moors when they came over here. <laughs> the nice Templars of the Middle East take us back to the true historical biblical land based in Western Arabia, not Palestine. The truth of the inner circle of the order of the Templars was such that it has been revealed that the secret 
would have rocked the cradle of Christianity and Judaic belief. Prince Michael, along with his co-author, Walid Saleh, all right, experienced firsthand the dangers of revealing information that many people would prefer to stay hidden. Well, God damn it, ain't worried about it staying hidden no more. And they tell you, tell, um, live to tell the story. Never before has anyone, especially a true author, examined the, um, revel the revelatory uh, theory that the roots of King of the Knights Templars and thus those of Freemasonry was actually deeply linked, not so much to Christianity, but to rather Islam, especially Mohammedism. The Knights Templars of the Middle East is guaranteed to stir more fires of controversy than any other book that date on Freemasonry and Templars. Well, let's go over here to... So it's by Prince Michael. Yeah, that's... Okay. Yep. So let's go over here and look at this. It says, many of today's images of the black rulers of Europe are falsely propagated as white people. Wow. Remember when we first read about George Orwell, 1984? He said every painting has been repainted. Every statue has been renamed. Remember? And he says this right here. Uh, they saying this right here. Many of today's images of the black rulers of Europe are falsely propagated as white people. Their portrait, their portrait wow. has been whitened, distorted, and merely invented to give a fake impression of European earlier rulers. However, there remain some authentic black portraits that are hidden from public view, while a few are ex um, exhibited in the National Portrait Gallery in London. Every European museum has overpainted 99% of the black portraits with fake white skin color. We will say that again. Every European museum has overpainted 99% of the black portraits with fake white skin color. The remaining lost or hidden dark skin portraits were found and exposed to the public or falsely identified to have looked black because of poor upkeep, outright negligence, or the portrait itself was exposed to be horrific fire. How absurd, since the prime object objective is to cover up evidence. The Europeans were once ruled by a dark-skinned African Moorish royal people. There it is. And these are the people that the Empress said that she was related to. If you remember earlier when we read that she was the head of the Western Europe of the Habsburg Empire of Spain, Portugal, and England, Italy. Yes, this is where the term whitewash comes from because they blacked us out, black, black out through whitewash, as um, Dr. Suzar said. All right? So, bam. Now you're going to find out that this is the original picture of King George III of Great Britain. He was not an Albion, a uh, bino European. He was a Moor, a so called black. And here's the mailing address to authenticate this depiction. You can write to the Science Museum of London, Exhibit R, uh, Row, London, SW7, 2DD, United Kingdom. And guess what? This is a portrait of his wife, Queen Sophia Stewart, well, Charlotte, Queen of Great Britain in Ireland, by Sir Alan Ramsay, prominent Scottish portrait painter. See, these are the portraits that they try to hide from us. And guess who King George III was? He was a Muslim. Uh-oh, a Moor. Muslim. In the name of Allah, Bismillah the Rahman Rahim, the all-merciful and commiserating God, our whom is on whom is our account. And we acknowledge your support, but there is nothing, nothing beginning neither beginning nor power, but that which proceeds forth from God, the high eternal God. For the servant of God and the commander of the faith in Muhammad, upheld and supported by the grace of God. Solomon, the son of Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the son of Ishmael, prince of the house of destiny of Hassan, 
who was ever upheld by the power of God, Sultan of Fars and Morocco and Susi and Dra- uh, uh, Draha and uh, Tafile and Tort, together with all the territories of the West. To our dear, beloved, and cherished, exalted by the power of God, the Sultan George the Third. I got so many damn books and read so much. I'm telling you, we bust, we gonna bust a hole in you. <laughs> King George the Third was a Sultan. He was a Sultan of what territories? The United Kingdom of Great Britain, of Ireland, of the Duke of Mecklenburg. Hello, we be heard that word Mecklenburg at before. Hmm, could it be? North Carolina, as she's yeah. Queen Sophia. Yeah. Oh, surely, surely of Mecklenburg, Mecklenburg County, Charlotte City in North Carolina. Mm. Mm-mm. You see, you see, this from the letter from Morocco Sultan, from the Moroccan Sultan, from here. Remember, I showed you that dude, Cat. And who else? Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Bey. It was from here. So this is a letter from them to King George III in order to find out what the hell is going on with these damn crackers over here. Why do they need our help? What the hell were you doing to them? Come on. And he calls him the Sultan, George III. Mm, 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 mm. See, see, this is how we bust the ass, bust hole in that ass, right here. Preamble: Constitution of the United States. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more M O R E perfect union. Do you know that M O R E is Masonic code word? And I'll show you what happens right here. What's the word M O R E? What you see? What? Oh my. God, when did they tell you that Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, when did they go? When did he tell you, when did they, historically, when did they tell you that they went? Before they became, before president, before when they were them helping, trying to get together Europe. the Declaration of Europe, yeah, the Declaration of Independence, they went to Europe and they went specifically to where? France. Yeah. <laughs> they See? actually did it. it this, this is why I got this right here. We revealing all of this. No more hiding, because we ain't in that time no more. This right here is real. So when we say a more perfect union, they was actually talking and encoded about who? The Moors. Because <laughs> you can't make something more perfect, can you? Because it's already perfect. perfect. Yeah. You see? Uh-oh. You see that? Oh, see? Oh, the shit is over. Oh, yes, yes, the shit is over. Here it is. North African Berbers are known as in old French as what? How do you spell it? M-O-R-E. What? So Moors and North African Berbers are the same people. You see that? And it says being a dark people in relations to Europeans. (laughs) <laughs> so now you know why on the back of the two dollar bill something is going on the Declaration of Independence is clearly proof of who the slaves really were they was branded Negro those who was branded Negro colored black were enslaved but were not as um, and are not the people seeking freedom from British from Britain or from the British who was who? King George III and his wife Sophia, uh, um, uh, Charlotte, were the rulers at this time period. The British wanted to come from up under their rulership and come under our rulership as we was the Moors here in our own land. So we had Moors that was ruling their asses over there in Europe. We was Moors ruling their asses over here in America. However, since the Moroccan Moors housed these serfs, indigenous servants and slaves, remember the word Slavic, as in the Yugoslavian, is the origin of the word slave. It is derived from the word Slavine, 
and Slavic. This refers to European members of the Serbo-Croatian um, um, members of the Slavic or the Slavonic people. However, contemporary socialists have layered the NATO identity with the social, political, connotative meaning. Thus, the said albino Europeans or Albion Europeans were the first slaves in America. And you don't believe that? You don't believe that? You're going to see. Why do the Europeans have our head on the coats? Because it came from those rulers that we just showed you and their bloodline. As you see, Britmore coat of arms. There was called also the brutish moors. That's where the term brutish come from, or brute, because we stronghold, we stronghold them. All right. European, the statement of Europeans doesn't fit the general themes of European world conquest and colonization. That is centered to scholarship on the early modern era. So Robert Davis, professor of um, Italy, um, Italian um, Renaissance history, Ohio State University. So get these books. White Car Go. They was white and they were slaves. The told history of the Europe of the enslavement of whites in early America. The slave the Irish slaves. Slave indentured and contract labor among Irish immigrants. All right. Then you have white slavery in the Barbary states. We had them. This is who was slaves first. They got you thinking, oh, the slaves came in 1619. It was about 20 some odd Negroes that came from Africa to, no, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Barbie says you got it. All right, so this is British. Hold up, let's look at it. British colonial officials with Islamic slave traders in Zanzibar. On the right is Hamid ibn Muhammad ibn Jamal ibn Rajab bin Muhammad bin Said al uh, Madari. Among Grabby, most commonly known as Tipu Tib. You should be here because you got to say all of that. Then, goddamn. He was the most notorious Islamic slaver. All right, and he died in 1905. Okay, let's go to it. The inhabitants of this part of Arabia nearly all belong to the race of Himyar. Their complexion is white. What do you say? is almost as black as that of the obsidians. Their bodies are very finely formed and slender, yet strong limbs and faces were semitic, noses generally aquiline, eyes full of fire, lips small, and mouths of very diminutive proportions. They're generally thin and never fat. They also have little or no beard. Their hair is long but curly, not woolly. All right, now you look at these jokers, these jokers got beards. So I don't know where he got that description from. But these are the ones who had them enslaved. White slaves of New Orleans. Here we come to America now. White slaves of New Orleans. The white slave traffic. All right? Tragedies of white slaves. White slavery or sell. White men for debt. Is we get the term debtors prisons from. It's impossible for black Americans to be slaves because of slave descent, because we're not Slavic. Oh, let's kill that one. And plus, this is Anthony Johnson, black slave owner. He had some of these slaves. Matter of fact, he had owned over 10,000 allegedly black slaves. But a lot of them were actually the Albion. Why do we never hear about this in media? In almost every state, including South Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Louisiana, free blacks owned as many as 10,000 slaves in 1850. It'll create the bigger picture of, hey, once again, we're fighting against our own people. So, fuck the slave part. I didn't right. that. Who was, started with the original slaves. Yeah. White slaves were owned by Negroes and Indians to such an extent that in the South, um, that the Virginia Assembly passed laws against the practice. 
Oh no, you can't own one of them. And it's so funny because, like they say, like you know, like white people fear that you know we gonna enslave them the way they did, but uh, that's because they did. Right. What was happening to them? Exactly. The first slaves imported into the American colony was 100 white children in 1619. Uh oh. Four months before the arrival of the first shipment of so-called black slaves. Many were bought from Ireland, where the law held that it was no more sin to kill an Irishman than a dog or any other brute. King James II, followed by King um, by Charles I and Oliver Cromwell, sold over 500,000 Irish Catholics into slavery throughout the 1600s onto plantations in the West Indies land of Antigua, um, Montserrat, Jamaica, Barbados, as well as Virginia, New England, Irish slaves were least expensive than Africans and treated with more cruelty and death. Y'all don't know nothing about this hill. All right. According to Paul Williams, Ph.D., at the time of the ratification of the Constitution in 1788, there were less than 50,000 slaves in America, and that vast majority of them was white. They was white. What year was that? 1788. 1788. They were pale. Yes, they was pale. Or well, as you would say, they was cretins. <laughs> or white, exactly. W I G H T, exactly. From 1600 until the early 1800, between half to two thirds of all whites were who was in the New World was born as slaves. White slavery cleared up the forest, drained the swamps, built the roads. So this is why, uh, ain't that some shit? This is probably why uh, Trump kept saying it's time to drain the swamp because he's probably came from their ancestry. <laughs> they worked and died in greater numbers than anyone else. Many of the Union soldiers who made up the ranks of Lincoln's army in the southern Ohio, western North Carolina, eastern T Tennessee, southern Illinois, um, Kentucky, and elsewhere were survivors of white slavery or descendants of white slaves. Yeah, see, this is what they don't tell you, and the real reason yeah, why, they got and the real reason why slavery ended was because of those wars that I talked about earlier, of the Seminole, which is the Massey Wars and the Gullah Geechee Wars, where they fought them from 1750 to 18, um, um, um 1858. The United States made um made laws for them on uh, white slaves too, the free and oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, right, I had the case laws, but I, I didn't lost them. I got to find them again. Right, right. Oh, yeah, that's real, though. It was the women. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the same time that allegedly slavery of us was happening here, we had them enslaved throughout Africa and Europe. Here it is. The Barbary slave trade refers to the slave market that flourished on the Barbary coast of North Africa, which included the Ottoman province of Algeria, Tunis um, um, Tunisia, and Triplo, uh, Tripolitania, and the independent Sultanate of Morocco between 1600s and the middle of 18th century. That's during the exact same time period. The Ottoman province in North, Amer um, North Africa was nominal under Ottoman um, suzerainty, but in reality, there was mostly autonomous. The North African slave market was part of the Arab slave trade. All right? So, this shows you what was really going on. And who's the Arabs? Or better yet, who was the Ottomans or the Barbary Coast Wars, as mentioned? It's the Ottomans, who's the, one of the largest empires in history. The existence for 600 years at its peak included now Bulgaria, Egypt, Greece, Hungary, Jordan, Lebanon, Israel, um, and Palestine or Palestinian um, territories, um, um, Macedonia, Romania, Syria, parts of Arabia, and north coast of Africa. In some countries, it is a legacy best forgotten. In others, it is a hotly debated topic, and in a handful of national prize have been nailed to this vital part of their history. So who are the Ottomans? The Ottomans, as you see, were 
blacks. The Moors. There's a slave movie down here that's low-key never ever talking about the fact that coming out of the Moors were holding slaves. So exactly. Exactly. Now, so people can know what's going on there. Yeah. See, many people only think that the Ottoman Empire is the Turks. But check this out. It says right here, mentioned in it, European chronicles was no such thing. It is thanks to European ignorance that has lasted centuries to the, na to the nation's building of Turkey that the Ottoman Sultans has become Turkey Sultan. Quite often, the European resident of um, um, Renaissance literature, the Sultan was referred to as the Great Turk. A title uh, would have meant nothing to the Ottoman court. So let's clear this up. The Ottoman Empire, for most of its existence, predated nationalism. The attacking forces of the uh, of the famous fall of Constantinople against the Byzantine Empire in 1453 weren't all Turks. In fact, not all of the preceding um, preceding forces were even Muslim. Okay, more than 30 of the sultans were the sons of women from the har harem. Why is this salad? Because none of these women were Turkish. It is unlikely any of them were even born Muslim or Muslim. Most of their background has been lost to the midst of time, but it seems most were European women. So serves, oh, they go to the word slave, um, from the word serve, um, which is Slavic, um, Greeks, Ukrainians. It is likely that the, la that the later Turkish sultans were genetically from more Greek than Turkish. All right? But really, they're not telling you the whole story. Because you'll find that there was actually Moors, all right, who mixed in with the Albion, European women, and they had their children. So they would have been mulatto, as we refer to them as, all right? Now, you can look at many mulattoes, and you can say, hold up. Like, for example, let's look at Barack Obama. If he was walking down the street right now, you wouldn't even know that he was what? He was mixed. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even think about that. So this is how they looked. All right, this is how they looked. So right here, in the video, Morris Paradigm by Hakeem H. Y. Bay, he states in Nexus Magazine, The History of Banking, it reads, there was a human cry in the newspaper in the Northeast banking interest to execute the president of the bank with the Confederate States of America in the South. For two years, the president of the South was kept in dark, wet, cold cells in the side of an earthen fortress in Monroe, Louisiana. He was an ill and broken man when he was put there. He should have died. He was expected to die. When it was apparent that there was no way the ravaged and occupied South, which was ruled by blacks. Wait, the South was ruled by blacks. Could ever revolt. He was released. Get the books. Barbary cruelty. Eyewitness account of white slavery under the Moors. <laughs> You see how they just had to go back to telling you who the ultimate people were? It was the Moors. See, see how they did that? See, this is what happens. You're like, hold on, let's put these pieces of the puzzle together. Robert C. Davis, Christian slaves, Muslim masters. White slaves, African masters. Black masters. Black slave owners. The blacks ruled the South. Yeah. It was full of white pictures in school. I remember learning about that because I was seventh grade for me. Right here, a considerable portion of the blacks of the blood of the Southern Negro of the United States is unquestionably what? Hmm. Hmm. Now, why does that show up in the uh, uh, the DNA? Uh, what's these DNA shits going on now? Ancestry.com. Why doesn't that show up in Ancestry.com? And this is from the Smithsonian. <laughs> Miss the law is called the Main Act. Of America. Huh? The law is called the Main Act. It says the White Slave Traffic Act, also called the Main Act, in the United States federal law passed June 25, 1910. It had something to do with, um, also known as the White Slave Traffic Act of 1910. The law was invoked over and over again to punish black men for their relationships with white women affairs that challenge the race the um, racial status quo it says white slavery also white slave trade or white slave trafficking refers to the chattels um the, the yeah the chattel slavery of europeans whether by non-europeans such as north africans and the muslim world or by other europeans for example 
naval galley slave of the Vikings um, thrill, thralls. Wow, that's yeah, think about that. Name. Same year that Prophet Nubadrali stepped on the on the on the scene, nineteen ten, isn't it? Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 They say what was um Jack Johnson's convict? That's what, yeah. That's what they got him with. They came up with that and then hit him with. It. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That was when they were slaving on the white white. That was when slavery was going on. You know. Yeah. Yep. So remember, we've seen that it says that the blacks ruled the South. Well, hold up. What does the Confederates say? The South. The South. He go a book called the Black Confederates. <laughs> oh, he go a picture of the Black Confederates in the war for Southern for Southern independence. The first Louisiana Native Guard. Native. Blacks were natives. Oh, we just finished reading considerable portion of the blacks in the South were Indian. Blood in them. Right? <laughs> Matter of fact, that's our flag. Hold on, what flag that looks like? The Confederate flag. The Confederate flag. The black uh, flag. This was the Indian flag. Oh, okay. or better yet, the black Confederate. Yeah. This is the original Confederate flag before the Europeans stole it and changed it into the symbol of hate and slavery to get black or more Indians to disconnect with the South and their own sign and symbol of the coming sun. The cruise um, constellation X marks the birth of the sun on December 25th and the three days visible in the sky. This original Confederate flag was one of our battle flags against European colonists because we were Confederates against the hijack of our land. I'll put me one on the back of my truck. <laughs> That's right. Ain't that something? So, now that I've destroyed basically all your concepts of who and what was really going on on planet Earth from 2.8 billion years ago to now, <laughs> and what all other black folks don't understand is the other time. Yes. All right, I saw the last, the final series of, uh, the finale series of The Princess Bride, I mean The Spanish Princess mm -hmm. on, on uh, stars. And right. uh, uh, this uh, Moorish family was moving out of getting out of England because mm -hmm. uh, of Henry VIII. But uh, the Spanish woman told uh, this Moor woman that uh, it'd be better uh, you, you go with your husband to the Ottoman Empire. Right. Because it would be better for the future for you and your sons, you know. Now, why would that Spanish woman tell her that? Right. They, well, were, definitely right dropping, they were definitely dropping some stuff down in, in that yeah. movie, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, they was dropping it. That was the yeah. same movie. I told, told you that this, uh, this queen of Scots, she hit this Scottish king in his face. Right. And she said, oh, you don't hit like a steward, but, this, but you do hit like a Douglas. Right. They were dropping it, but a lot of that went on by people's heads. Right, right. Stuart and Douglas, more Moorish um, uh, uh, families, bloodline in Europe. <laughs> yep. So right here, we see the man on the left is John Hansen, who is said to be the first president of the United States under Congressional Congress. And the man on the right is Ben Bay, who is known as Ben Bay, who was born in 1731, made him 45 in this picture, while... John Hanson was born in 1721, making him 55 in this picture. He is also the one with the gray hair. If you look into the Encarta Encyclopedia, you won't see either of these men. Why is that? Their names are not on the Declaration of Independence because they were both Moors. And if we had our own government, we do not need to sign the Declaration of Independence. We wrote the Declaration of Independence for them. However, George Washington and his cronies never actually severed the ties to the king, and they did not win the Revolutionary War. It was a setup to trap and totally defeat the Moors from inside. What you were taught in school is called reconstructed history. Then they took them to homeschool to still teach them what they want you to learn. And now exactly. they're teaching them what they want you to learn. Versus y'all just educating yourselves. Either way, teach what needs to be learned. Exactly. So we find that Ben Bay Emmanuel Muali, whose name is Benjamin Banneker, he is from the Abenaki tribe. 
all right, which is part of the Lenape tribe. The Abenaki tribe and the Lenape tribe are the same people. And as you see here, this is his almanac, which they give credit to the almanac creator as Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin did not exist. That was Richard Saunders. And who actually did exist was Benjamin Banneker, Ben Bay Emanuel Muali, who formed Washington, D.C., designed Washington, D.C., as well as also Philadelphia. What about John Hanson? John Hanson was the first president um, of the United States under the um, Articles of Confederation. But I know, I know that, but what, 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 what tribe was he uh, tied to? Oh, on um, the Lenape. Oh, okay, M, M2, okay. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. this is actually Benjamin Banneker, as you see here, a painting. This is actually was an oil painting in the Scottish Rice Museum, Masonic Museum. Oil you painted by Peter Waldell, depicting a meeting between President George Washington, who was Adam Weissup, and surveyors Andrew um, Ellicott and Benjamin Banneker. But who's holding the map? Benjamin Banneker. Why? Because he's the one who actually designed Washington, D.C., as we all have been told in school. But what we haven't been told in school is that George Washington actually, according to Robert Anton Wilson, his book Cosmic Triggers, Final Secret of the Illuminati, that George Washington actually is Adam Weissoff. This picture that you see here of George Washington as we've been taught, what does it really say? Underneath, Adam Weissoff, February 6, 1748, November 18, 1830. So Adam Weissoff and George Washington was one and the same person. This is a trick. And his name was not Washington. His name was Washington. Washington, not real name of our first president. So why are they still telling you that bullshit? Professor Gig, um, um, Sigrand, Researchers lead to the conclusion that it was D. Hartburn, how Washington became Washington. The name Washington was left in Masonic code to tell you who was the last Western Empire that was here in this plane, in this land, which was Washington. Instead of Washington. They think Washington. they flipped, but we decode all these mysteries. It's over. So they call it Washington. 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 Yeah, they anglicized it. Indeed. Anglicized Washington to Washington. Exactly. In honor of the profile, it says here, black man and more, John Hanson was the first president of the United States, 1781 to 1782. George Washington was really the eighth president of the United States. And technically the ninth president because, um, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Pastor Randolph, Randolph, Randolph um, became president twice. So here it is. George Washington was not the first president of the United States. In fact, the first president of the United States was one John Hanson. Don't go check in the encyclopedia for this guy's name. He is one of the most great men that was lost in history. He's extremely lucky we may actually find a brief mention of his name. The country, the new country will actually form October, March, excuse me, 1st, 1781, with the adoption of the Treaty of the Articles of Confederation. This document was actually proposed June 11, 1776. All right, this is before the signing, all right, before the signing of the Declaration of Independence, they tell you it's July 4th, right? But not agreed upon by Congress until November 15, 1777. Maryland refused to sign this document until uh, Virginia and New York City, their western lands, Maryland was afraid that these states would gain too much power in the new government from such large amounts of land. Once the signing took place in 1781, a president was needed to run the country. John Hanson was chosen unanimously by Congress, which included George Washington, or as we say, George Washington, all right, or D. Hart Byrne. In fact, all of the other potential candidates refused to run against him as he was a major player in the revolution and an extremely influential member of Congress. As the first president, Hanson um, had quite the shoes to fill. No one had ever been president, and the role was poorly defined. His actions in office were set to presidents for all future presidents. He took office just as the Revolutionary War ended. Almost immediately, the troops demanded to be paid. 
as would be expected. Any long on war, there was no funds met, um, met the salary. As a result, the soldiers threatened to overthrow the new government and put Washington on the throne as monarch. So Washington comes in, who is actually Adam Weishoff, all right? And Weishoff is actually Washington, the English transliteration of Weishoff. Weishoff is the German transliteration, Austrian transliteration. The English transliteration of Weishoff is Washington. Now, ain't that some shit? So here it is. George Washington, ninth president of the United States of America, chopping down the Peruvian cherry tree in 1774, the national flag of the defeated Moors. There it is. Uh -huh. I believe it. That's where the Cherokee concept comes from. It says that he was nine years old. He went to his father and said, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down the cherry tree. Remember that? Yeah. Nine years old. Yeah. Nine really was him being the ninth president. So wait, you that? But uh, Brother Arlene. Yes, yes. Is he's president of United States Service Corporation. Mm hmm That so that, that is a that was chartered from um from King um Elworth or the Europeans, and they set up that corporation to provide services for the indigenous people here and provide a home for their, their mulatto children of the European Moors that right. had those mulatto children that broke uh, the Mohammedan law of bestiality. Right. And this is why they created Christianity to try and cover that, and this is why... It was our own brothers, our own people that attacked us, that started up the commercial war because the Sultan told them those children of European cho uh, wives are uh, disinheritable, and uh, that comes up under Deuteronomy. They pointed out in their own book. So this is why they began once with the uh, Civil War and, uh, and created the corpse. The right. and all the other things to steal your uh, inheritance and to steal your identity. Exactly. See? So, um, so yeah, and the people need to know when he says president uh, is of that service corporation. Right. So not uh, of, Ali. Yes. Not a plan. Uh, excuse, excuse. I ain't Still, mean to cut your wheels, not, brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, you mean that was uh, Peyton Randolph, the great grandfather of Pascal Beverly Randolph, right? Right, right, exactly. I remember the last name was Randolph, but I just said Pascal because I was trying to remember um, the last name Randolph. But yes, that was um, Randolph. That was the um, the proper Randolph that we're talking about there. Yeah, Peyton Randolph, yeah, September fifth, seventeen seventy four. Right, and you see again where he serves. So read that one too. As a matter of fact, read all all eight of them. To to uh, to George Washington that way everybody can understand what we're talking about. Uh, well, let's say hey. uh, Con Continental Congress uh, presidents. Uh, the first uh, first was Peyton Randolph, uh, Henry Middleton, uh, John Hancock. This is uh, 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 damn, we just said his name. John Hanson, uh, Henry Lawrence, John Jay. Samuel Huntington and Thomas McKean. Okay. I didn't say say one for John Hanson. Right. Uh, Elias uh, Boondinot, mm -hmm. Thomas Mifflin, Richard Henry Lee. Five is John Hancock. Uh, six Nathaniel Gorham. Uh, seven is Arthur S. McClare and Cyrus McGriffin. So technically, he's not just a ninth president. He technically he is the seventeenth, um, the seventeenth president. <laughs> right, right. And then uh, quick question, one. Chief Arlene. This is still the this is still the short uh, form government though at this time, isn't it? Because well, this is still the republic, the republic that, we was, yeah. that we was helping them to structure from our confederate, which you have is the Iroquois Confederation or the Algonquin Confederation. Right, because it didn't become um, it didn't the coup didn't happen until uh, Lincoln. Correct. Right, right. 
Gotcha. So Fort Negro, 1860, says, and even of a disputed um, dispute, disputation, of chiefs went into the fort and demanded its surrender, but they was abused and treated with the utmost contempt. The black chief heaped much abuse on the Americans and said he has been left in command of the fort by the British government and that he would sink any American vessel that should attempt to pass it and would blow up the fault if he could not defend it. The chief also informed me that the Negroes had a red flag. Had a red flag. So right. that's the original flag of the Moors. Now, this right. is why you see this flag on the ground at the feet of George Washington. <laughs> yeah, that name was Boudinot. Not that right. Boudinot. No. Right, Boudinot. Right, right. That's it. This is actually a painting of George Washington. Um, I should have put the full painting on it, but I wanted to focus on them damn feet and our flag at his damn feet. So it was said, if he would agree, if you, if we would agree to take the feathers and the turbans off the moor's head and remove the sandals from their feet and enforce it with severe punishment, it is also swear death oath between ourselves to religiously and faithfully not to allow anyone to teach the Moorish children who they really are, who they really were, and who their forefathers were too damn late for that. To only <laughs> the Moorish children to be taught that they were truly Negroes, black people, and color folks, i.e., George Washington said this in 1774. Yeah. Say, uh, Brother Mir? Yeah, first continental conference from September the 5th to October the 26th, 1774. This is when our quote unquote nationality was stripped from us. Mm, that's why right. what created the law. George Washington, his father, was was a Moorish uh, prince or yeah. something or emperor, something like that. His, his father was a four blooded Moor. Right. Washington's father. So the thing is, when they talk about the that commercial war, the civil war of brothers fighting brothers, yeah, it was fighting those the what they, the Batanki nation, right? More, right? What they say the Boule, mm-hmm. who had those Europeans uh, in their charge because there were no Europeans here, right? You know, we had associate partners called Indians, what they call Indians now. Which were Mong- Mongolians, right? That came over, right? And yeah, so that's why in the United States they can only use color of law because they're colored people, right? And that's why you're supposed to be outside of that United States in the Republic. But the thing mm-hmm. is, if you claim to be a descendant of a slave. Slaves get nothing, but if you're a prisoner of war, then you're you're uh, due restitution. Right. It's called restitution of Venus or something like that. And we definitely uh, deserve that because our nationality and birthright was taken away from us. And it says by 1774, most of the Moorish armies were defeated. The European settlers did nothing at first. They just studied them. The way they ate, live, and act, as they still do today. After being conquered and put into slavery, all history of the Moors and their teachers were collected by Europeans and burned, while either stored away and fractionalized in various books. That's why I had, to, as you've seen, we had to read hundreds of books to even come to these conclusions that we came to. In the same year, at six and Chestnut Streets and just on um, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Moors were stripped of their names, nationality, birth rate, and the word Negro, colored black, and Ethiopians were put on them instead. The national last name was El and Bay, dating back to an ancient time of the Arabian of um, um, Abraham and Hagar, who was the um, really um, Abraham El and Hagar Bay, right? Um, on October the 14th of that same year, the first Continental Congress met at Independence Hall at 6 and Chestnut Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Then the national capital, as a result of meeting with the enforcement of the first seven articles yeah. of the Constitution, known then as the Constitution of Confederation. The enforcement of this law put the Moors, all right, to the words marked Negro, Black, and Colored outside of the Constitutional Fold. 
thereby rendering them undesirables and thus unable to receive the rights and immunities as well as protection of citizens as provided by the national constitution. Whereas by their being recognized as undesirables, the slaves advocated could use them to supply slave labor, which was in great demand in the new South, a new nation, excuse me, without fear and reproach of the law. However, in 1774, the country was not lawfully recognized as having its own independence. Therefore, the words Negro, Black, and Colored, etc. was not officially put on the record of the Moors, but used explicitly in actual practice. In the year 1776, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the Moors was divided as a nation. Our flag was taken down by George Washington um, um, out in down the Purview Cherry Tree, came down the Purview Cherry Tree, of which our flag is widely known because of its bright red fill and five pointed um, green star in the center. In 1779, the Moors were put into perpetual slavery, and the words Negro, colored, and blacks was put on their um, state records. All right, so that's what happened. All right, that's what happened. So we know that George Washington was the chairman of the convention, and George Washington summarized the raging debate on how he wanted to ship the Moors. And um, basically, it says, stated that 200 years from today, the Moors people would not know their nationality, nor the national name of their forefathers. Also, they would not know from which land our ancestors that they have that we had descended from. This meeting was adjourned as a consensus that they would secretly meet again October the 14th, 1774, at the Pennsylvania State House, which later became known as Independence Hall. This is the real fact. So, all right, I'm going to end here. So, y'all should know that what took place was the thief or the theft of our empire that we had here. All right? If you get the information about the Tartarian Empire, you know that the Tartarian Empire, the Habsburg Empire, the um, Moorish Empire, the Ottoman Empire, all of that was the same empire. It was all ruled by Moors. All on, Moors. On three continents, Africa, Asia, and the Americas. All right? And this is in the book. Um, um, the wonderful um, empire of the um, of the Kushite of the Kushites, the wonderful yeah the wonderful empire of the ancient Kushites, by uh, Drus uh, Drusilla Houston. She it states, over there? "Huh? Is it over there? Yeah, it, I got it over there." All right, so that this is why on the back of the two dollar bill they show you the two seals. One seal is ours, as we, which is known as the de jure. And the other seal is the one that we gave them, which was just simply to do import and export business on our land. But it was not all of the land. Right? Moors, Federal Reserve, or Federal Government, conjunction with the Albion European Union States. Okay? This is why you yeah, have Pyramid on the back has a seven which is known as the Circle 7, as they call it, the Great Seal. And so all of this correlates to what we're talking about. Masonic, this is Masonic. All right, so here we have the form agricultural incident, um, um, incendiary uh, civilizations. All right. They form tons of tribes. The Iroquois advanced and an advanced social structure, which influenced the formation of the United States of being a democratic republic. All right. So it was the Iroquois Confederation that helped put together not just the um, Declaration of Independence, but also the Constitution for the United States of America. Is that a book? Yes, this is a book. Who is that by? For, uh, Founder for the Secret Societies, Freemasons, Illuminate, um, Lumina, um, Illuminati, Rosicrucians, and the Decoding of the Great Seal. Um, this is from um, Dr. Hero Nemus. Hero Nemus. Let's look up his book, Hero Nemus. All right, Robert, Dr. Robert Hero Nemus. Right? That's 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 a hell of a title there. 
founding fathers, secret societies, Freemasons, Illuminati, Rosicrucians, and decoding of the Great Seal. Right? Dr. Robert Hieronymus. All right, so um, this is where we get these secrets from. We got to go to masonry. All right? Someone went there. All right? That's so funny. The world's crucial. As a kid, I looked like I was I was in the house often. I was an internet baby. So I was in the house 10, 11, 12, looking up Illuminati, Freemasons. Then there was a temple around the house, from my house, coming around from my house. And so I was looking up different stuff, and it's like, okay, so obviously the Illuminati, the Illuminati is a part of Freemasons in some way. Okay, so then, and then it was like, okay, I was like coming up with all these different things as a kid. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do with any of this. So let's just, and now here we are. And. Yeah. What they can do is knowledge is teach. Yeah. <laughs> and so make others aware of what's really going on. Because yeah. what we have done tonight is actually to remove the veil from your eyes historically, socially, psychologically, based on anthropology, archaeology, paleontology, <laughs> chemistry, <laughs> biology. <laughs> We're going into all these fields tonight and showed you who's who on planet Earth. All right? That's what we've done. We the bomb. And right here, you yourselves, you do the same thing. You take this information, you do the same thing. You drop the bomb on them. All right? Gap band said it best. <laughs> all right? Yeah, you know, once you say you are more... Mm-hmm. They cannot, it, they cannot uh, prove that you're not a more. How can right. they prove that you're not a more? They can't, they, especially when you put it on the record. <laughs> yeah. And so this is the thing is, that's why the prophet said, proclaim your nationality. And right. You proclaim your nationality. Now you become uh, an heir to the trust. Right. Well, yeah, you can claim to be a more, but you still got to tie yourself back to a tribe and a nation so that way you ain't stateless, you know what I'm saying? If you want to be real with it, definitely. Exactly. Well, when you, you have to find yourself Cause back. Because a more is just like, it's an adjective in this thing, in this sense, you know what I'm saying? Saying you're more, it's just saying it's like that. That's, you know what I'm saying? It's true, but more you, still need to, you still need to tie yourself back. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. More is a noun. Well, yeah, now, more is the adjective. No, more is the adjective, yes, sir. Okay. More is, right. It's the mm-hmm. adjective. More is the adjective. But right. more is a noun. Right. So that's why when Dr. Arlene gives you the paperwork and everything, it states who you are. You are a Washita more. Right. M U U R. Right. Or M O O R. Yeah, yeah. It, right. Because mm-hmm. all files are interchangeable. Mm-hmm. So we, so the thing is, so now when you do that, that is what they call an adverse claim on to come saying, let them know I am coming to regain my state. But but there's other parts that we're missing, and I'm gonna fill Dr. Arlene in on those parts and everything, so that we. Because we are also international, and so uh, so he gave all of the history because that is the job of a of a curator preserve the history of a nation of a tribe of a of um of the people. So Dr. Elaine would be the curator of the Washita Empire. That is a, so. We start to gain many titles of, uh, of of nobility and different titles to operate in different capacities uh, as we need to do certain things. So, so uh, this is you know he always does a great job of providing everything that we need as a nation. So. We have to go out and support and bring that information back 
so that we, so he can do the job and do everything so that we can make, uh, as a nation, we start to grow. So what's the significance so, of that trust? What the trust did was protect, uh, because the land has always been our land. It is all, still our land. Yeah. But as but to protect the heir for when a time came in the new age, in this new galactic month, the, um, because there were so many um, people infiltrating the temple and doing everything destructive, the prophet, he preserved the knowledge and everything else for those new moors coming in in the new age when it would come out of the darkness and into the light. So now okay. that trust is open. Okay, so since we're the heirs of the land and they're not even honoring the empress uh, court case, what makes you think they're going to honor Nova Jurali, uh trust? No, the thing is, is that lots of times we have to go back as the new Moors coming in with the new knowledge, we will go back and reopen the case and and, re- and receive all the um, everything that was set up by our ancestors. Because the thing is, is that uh, it was harder in certain in the Pisean age for knowledge. That was a belief. Now we're in the new age of transformation. We know. We know certain things. And like he just put it out, we know these things now. We're not, we don't have to believe. We don't have to guess. We 100% know. So with that new knowledge, uh, uh, new applications of applying the law that was uh, set down before us. So this is the thing we're going to be doing uh things that our ancestors set up and left those uh, uh left those things for us to um to do. And that's the difference in everything. Because there's a lot that has been hit but now those things are coming forward. how to operate in the courts, how to take control of your estate, how to be part and parcel of the government. All of these things have now been revealed. So now it's time for us to take the new knowledge and implement certain things to be for the benefit of the nation. That's what we're making me ask about as far as the land of the law referring to land cannot be sold because if you're going back and you're you can connect you connect the dots to you know your family coming from somewhere where the land was yours and taken but they'll be like oh we know it was sold to this person but at the end of the day to sell land it's not the law here it is it's right but, like, no deed over no, is a land pattern or a lodial title right no, <clears throat> have what they call an aboriginal is higher than an allodial title. Right, aboriginal, aboriginal title. title. Right. The highest on the planet. Nope, aboriginal title. So aboriginal title is higher than a lodial title? Yeah, a lodial title, yeah. Okay, because I, I was hearing it back and forth between, like, you know, you remember Nitsi L. Bay and Taz and knowing they was going at it. And then the other brother, Jamal, they were talking about Aboriginal versus Elodio. So, for sure, understood. Yeah, and this is why when uh, Obama, who had to come in his proper person, he, and he changed his name, got rid of his bar car, and we have to get, we have to render unto Caesar with those things that belong to Caesar. When their bar cards back to them, because it is these people with um, what are letters of marquee that have been operating um, on our land, um, causing problems, and this and that. So now the corporations, they're bankrupt, they're done, they're out. But still, the people believe in them. So we have to do 
certain things to register and get our people the knowledge of who there is because already in the DMVs, the Department of Motor Vehicles, they will tell you a license is not a form of identification. Nationality under 18 U.S.C. 1028 tells you the nationality card is the highest form of identification. And so the things that we were told before, like from the temples that sold us out, don't flash your nationality card in front of Europeans. It will cause confusion. Maybe at that time, but now is the time to show that nationality card. That nationality card is also allows you to egress and regress upon the land. So you have to learn how to enforce those things. And they do know they are they do know now they're not gonna be given a lot of problems like before. Because now they have no power. We have had um you know, on the back on the Yuan is the the face of the Yuan is the Asiatic and the Asian. So they have a picture of a of a man with a fair zone and the Asian to the hey in his shadow. This is what's on China's money. See? So quick question, brother. Uh, is is the gold yeah. included in that trust? Nothing. They have removed the gold from the Vatican. Is it in so our still, is it So in our still going to play with fiat? Brother, we, we're going to, this fiat, the prophet said that you're going to see that fiat blowing up and down because it's going to be worthless. Our job now is, as they say, secure the bag. We have to go and get our bag. We have to go get our gold, and where we will have our gold, we have to have a place of safekeeping. How do we, we get our gold? Yet, yet. Pardon? How do we get our gold? Pardon? Our gold is there. We will get our gold. Brothers, can I make a joke real quick? Go ahead. Can I make a joke real quick? Um, what we need to do. We all know law. We all know uh, de facto law as well as the jury law. Um, we know the system of law that they've been using to exchange. One of the things that we need to deal with in harmony with knowing law, whether the jury or de facto, is we need to retain our African spiritual systems. And that's a thing that's been uh, overlooked by many of our scholars, we must retain our African spiritual systems. Now, when I'm talking about our African spiritual systems, I'm talking about the Guru, I'm talking about the Ifa, I'm talking about the Palo, Mayombi, I'm talking about the Sanzaria. Because when you look at what they've been doing for the last past centuries, they've been using our African spiritual systems against us, then making us think that our African spiritual system is devil worship. Yeah. Yeah. So in harmony with knowing law and exercising law the way we've been doing, we also need to tap into our African spiritual system. Brother, our African uh, spiritual system. I'm all for yeah. devil worship. Brother, no. What they've been practicing right. is the right. That's the with the dead, corporation. This is what they've been dealing in, uh, dealing with the necromancy. <clears throat> once, see, the thing is, once you be, you proclaim your nationality and you do a couple things, now you're in full life, proper persona. See, and the and the dead and the living do not um, do not communicate. We don't do seances. We don't do summons. See, we have a court now that has been opened. Say that again now. We, have, you don't we have to go. The law that was prevented, that was, um, we have to go into admiralty law. The law of the sea is what our ancestors provided for us. 
Understood. Understood. Trust me, understood 100%. I've been dealing with commercial law since cracking the code first edition. <clears throat> understood as well. Not commercial. One thing, Not commercial. One thing that, one thing We're not listen. dealing with UCC, say, brother. We don't deal with UCC. Right. I'm not talking about UCC. I didn't say anything about UCC. I said commercial law. Commercial law is universal. Period. Because what they've been dealing, dealing with, with is code. mercantile law. The law of Brother, you gotta listen to what they're talking. Uh, y'all have to, y'all have to, y'all have to, y'all have to let one speak and then let the other speak. Let's not talk over each other so we can get a clear understanding of what each other is saying. Peace. Go ahead, brother. So I, I'm just saying what they've been dealing in is in mercantile law, the law of insurance, the law of guarantee. That's a new religion, brother. We have to go back and be of the Mohammedan race. We don't deal in usury. We don't deal in we don't deal it with credit cards and interest, really, brother. That, that is that is usury. Let so, me ask you something. Yes. You don't deal you with insurance license? guarantees. Yes, brother. You got a driver's license? I don't have a driver's license. Do you have a credit card? No, I have a debit card, brother. You have a debit card? Yes. So okay, the American well, you're, Express is you, you're what dealing with the fiat you. system. You, you're dealing with the fiat system. If you got a debit yeah. card, you're dealing with the fiat system. I had to, yeah. to get a debit card the other day, a new bank account, just so I could get the rental card. When they ask me, I'm like, I, but if I say Brother, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying is the thing is the things that we think are normal, they have brought, they, these people practice the Talmud. They don't practice the court. They practice the Talmud. And they brought this out in the open, and we think it's acceptable. Going to the hospital, getting surgery performed on you, those are Talmud practices, brother. Now, let me ask you a question. Where do you think the Talmud comes from? Brother, that's dark, black magic. Where does the Talmud come from? Does the Talmud not come from the African spiritual systems? Does it come from where? Does it not come from the African spiritual systems? It may have come from that, brother. But it I comes believe directly from the African spiritual nature. system. I don't, I don't think it came from our system because, see, if you use certain things, it's from you. you say that you could be paying too much credit. Uh, you make it seem like they're the ones who created the whole credit and debt. Brother, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about Caucasians, brother. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about our own brothers, brother. See, I'm talking about us. It's, it's always been between us and what we accept. Because the African American is not African American. It's American African. Because everything started here. So I'm saying is, it's our own brothers that have been practicing and been waging war upon us to get you well, to come out of that, that's, your that's well understood. That's well understood. But what I'm trying to say is that we have relinquished our spiritual systems. And being as though we relinquished our spiritual systems, the Europeans have been using them against us. And this is why it's hard for us to win. I understand that, brother. Yeah, they've been using it, but the thing is, if you're here today on this call, you've broken that spell, brother. You're not done. Yeah, you're not done. Necromancy. You can I get what both of you brothers are saying, and no one has lost a spiritual system if they breathe in. That we can cut that out. The point is, we're trying to get to a remedy to where we're trying to help our people and help ourselves and get rid of these fools once and for all. And if it ain't, it ain't coming down to yourself. that. Now you got to ask yourself, who's actually breathing? Okay, I'm not, all right. So no, when, I hold my breath, when I hold my breath, I'm going to die. 
I'm going to right, hold my that, breath that, for, a that, period, for, a, for a long period of time. I hold that breath. I'm going to be dead. So I'm right, actually peace. running. This, this, but peace, 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 peace. This, 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 that's not that's not that's not what he's speaking on. What he what he mean by what he mean by um like okay we we know we breathing we definitely are breathing all right so when you go in any if you go in any pyramid or any 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 biblical text or anything you always hear it always saying the walking dead or the dead you know what I'm saying so just because you're breathing doesn't mean that you are alive or doesn't mean that you are awoke. You are dealing with two different types of parts of your cell. You have spiritual and you have flesh. Now, the government, the system, is built on a fleshly base. So that is why all our people are attracted to it, because everything is attracting to their flesh. So we have a battle going on. That's why he said we have to reclaim our spirituality. We have to be awoke again, because as long as we are asleep, or what some would say, dead, we will continue to be lost in finding the true way to build a, 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 a nation like it's supposed to be. So to come to understand that, we have to understand that we have to use a form of what a lot of people say manipulation, okay? We will have to manipulate as far as what's going on in order to get our people. So by building an economy, something, an economy based, something that will be beneficial for our people, that will attract our people. So when we get our people to be attracted to that little, that little small little thing that doesn't mean anything, that is when we can teach them and awaken them to show them who they really are and who they truly are. But the reason why they continue to trust in the government is because all they know is the government. They know TANF. They know child support. I mean, child support. They know they know um 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 checks and 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 stimulus checks and. See, these are the things they know. They feel like that is helping them, but that is keeping them dead. Yes, they are breathing, but they are dead because they don't even own themselves. So I get what you're saying as far as building something and structuring something in order for us to build what we had before and bring it back. So it's all going to have to start, first of all, with the ones that are putting it together. Yes, they have to understand their spiritual. They have to be awoke. They have to be alive in order to do it because if you're not alive or you're not awoke or you're not aware, you're going to be continually chasing things that's going to, that's going to benefit you. Like interest, you know what I'm saying? You want to gain some type of profit off of something. So in order for us to build something that is righteous, we have to build something that will not benefit us per se, specifically. We have to find something that will benefit all our people, and this will attract all our people because then they will understand so that is the only way we can catch other people but the only people that will be able to do that are the ones who are spiritually awoke well, that was well put brother but we still are breathing so we all connect on that same level anyway some people just okay, the don't universe know, so is going have... to connect on energy regardless because energy is what's keeping us all alive if you take so, energy from out of the world then we all are dead so let me so ask you this. So you keep saying we're breathing. Of course we're breathing. So let me so let me ask you this. So you want most of our people to get on their knees and prostrate and bust their head five times in in, in certain ways, or you want us to practice some things now, that don't now, exist? Or, or, I see, or now, we see, when, when we go to our people, so when we go to our people, we do not go to them. We do not go to them religiously. We don't go at them with religion because we know religion is what has keeping us blind now. Religion has broken down our whole spirituality because, first of all, when you say bumping your head or prostrating, that was an act of meditation in Africa if you check it in. But when we see it, we see, we see Islam. We see the religion. We see that religion thing. But, see, in, in order to get our people, we can't go at them with anything that has anything to do with religion. We, we, we take the meat out of the out of out of the out of the out of the bull. You take the meat out of it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you get the bones and just disregard the meat. You get what's really inside of the truth, but we walk upon that. And by us walking upon that and building something that is righteous, they're gonna to wanna to walk and follow our steps. They're gonna say, Well, what are these guys doing? Because I was into Christianity but it has not gotten me anywhere but to continue begging to the to the government for something and marching up and down the streets for them to change something. Okay, so what are they doing? Because they have gotten all these businesses and now we can go to these businesses if I indulge in what they are doing and I can go to this business and just get whatever I need done for free just by my little investment okay so what is e going to do for you uh when when it comes to that 
Yeah. See, we don't. I don't deal with that. And, I don't want to deal with nothing that got anything to do with religion. Okay, but well, when you the one that just brought up, we need our African spiritual system back. See, when we talk about spirituality, we're talking about uh, 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 what's inside of us. We have a well, some would say we have a sect and we have a haru. So that means we have a righteous way and a in a negative way. So when we're fighting, when we're walking with the negative way, we're going to continue to chase fleshly desires. But when we're walking in the spiritual way, we're not looking for anything that's going to please the flesh. We're just looking for something that's going to unite us. Hey, peace, family, peace, peace. Hey, peace, family, mm-hmm. not to cut nobody off. I don't want to cut nobody wisdom. Uh, this is definitely not I just don't want to, before I get too deep, if there's anybody who's trying to, like, actually, uh, you know, connect afterwards that's trying to deal with, like, the law system of the Washita, just go ahead and drop your number, and uh, I'm going to text you. You know what I'm saying? We can uh, work on building a few things, even with the law, the language, or anything like that. If y'all really want to get things popping, get things moving, I'm going to let y'all keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, just I'm, to, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's spirit and breath and breath alone. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Go do, do y'all thing, but if anybody is interested in, you know, in building on the law aspect or anything like that, like deeper, yeah, deeper law aspect. But yeah, y'all go ahead and keep building. Yeah, because yeah, you got my see, that's what I said. We need that type of knowledge uh, in order to do what we need to do. Yeah, uh, Doctor Ali, I have a quick question, real quick, before I hang up. Um, about uh, solar return, because I know that happens on this eve, well, in the morning, um, around five o two. What is there any suggestions that you can give those who are spiritual? Um, yes, um, the channel which that you want to do is called Bob Beck and New. Bak Benu. Bak Benu. Bak Benu. Bak Benu. Okay. Bak Benu. B A B A K B N U. Let the um, flight. Okay. So, um, mm-hmm. I, what you sent me, that's another chant, the old man pan meal. That chant is good. Yes, that, that chant is good. Okay, and is it going to be a 502 R time, which is Eastern mm-hmm. Standard Time? Um, I think it's 42. What you say? I couldn't hear you. Six forty two is when it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. When it's gonna come. Okay, six forty two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so meditating or whatever. Is it okay to burn the sage and stuff? Of course. All right, I got you. Thank you. Peace and love, family. Watch it out east. Peace and love. Okay, watch the east. Um, asking. No, I should eat. Not so much. I think that it's important that there are, because like we, like you're a teacher, there are teachers. So there are ascended master teachers that are here that practice the spirituality that we are talking about. There are, I'm not gonna call them wizards, warlocks, voodoo, whatever the name is. We use people to like say manipulate to manipulate these energies is what the magic is. So on a consistent basis. We are seeing our people go to sleep with different rituals. There's these different rituals on TV all day, every day. It's in the music. It's on the radio. There's so many different aspects of rituals being done to put people to sleep. But where are the mass awakening rituals that are being done? So I think that that is like a little piece of the puzzle as far as the the powerful beings coming together and being like, okay, so we know that TV, TikTok is running.